Okay, we're here with the uh, team captains coming to the floor, coming to the center of the floor. It'll be Kendall Hickerson for Yellow Summit. It'll be number 23, Caden Baker. We'll get the other two players for you here in a minute. Head coach for the Yellow Summit Panthers is Hunter Sims. Charles Melton, Joe Couch are both assistant coaches. Trent Purdom was the other head, other uh, captain for the Panthers, and we're going to get this tipped off here in just a minute. The head coach for Derek Rogers is your head coach for the Lead Hill uh, Tigers. On the floor for Yeovil Summit would be number 10, Hunter Rayleigh, number 23, Hunter Hickerson, number 12, Noah Layton, number three, Kendall Hickerson, and number 33, Noah Ferguson. That'll be your starters for the Panthers. For the Lead Hill Tigers, it'll be number 23, Caden Baker. It'll be number five, Kate Coda Lemon. Number 34, Sedemeyer Cedem Petrovic. Number 30, Hagen Dotson. And number two, Nolan Turner. Hopefully we have a better connection this for this this ball game and we don't get kicked off like we did twice in this in the other game. Here's the opening tip. It'll be controlled by the Tigers. Dotson with the basketball. He'll hand it off to Turner. Turner will get it over to number five, Lemon. Lemon will 23. Baker will pick up the ball after it was knocked away by the Panthers. The Panthers defense. It'll be blocked by number 33, Ferguson, and be brought back down the field by or that back down the court by Layton. Layton with the basketball. Get, tries to get it to Ferguson. The ball will be kicked by the Tigers, and it'll belong to the Panthers. They'll inbound this from their own baseline. They'll start on the east end of the floor. Here in this first half. Shot up by Layton. It's good. It's a three-point bucket. Panthers lead three to zero early in this ball game. Turner will bring it back up the floor. He'll get it out into the corner. Back over to the center of the floor. Petrovic puts up a shot. It's good from three points. We've got a three-point, a three-three tie early in this ball game. Layton with the basketball. He'll get it back over to Number three, Hickerson. Hickerson will get it down to 33, Ferguson. Ferguson back over to Hickerson. Tries to come inside. Petrovic steal, steals the basketball in midair. Tigers get across the timeline. They'll get back down the floor. Petrovic with the basketball. He gets it down to a shooting player going to the rim. It'll be blocked. It's blocked by number 23, Hunter Hickerson. Layton back down the floor with the basketball. Passed it over to Hunter Hickerson. Gets it back and puts it up for up and in for a three-point shot. They're going to call a travel against number two, Nolan Turner of the Tigers. Ball will go back to the Panthers. They lead 6-3, six 6-16 to, six to play in the first quarter. Layton will take the inbounds pass. And the Panthers will set up their offense. Hickerson over to number 12. Correction, number 10 is Hunter Rayleigh. Number 12 is Layton. Petrovic will throw this in. He'll throw it in to Turner. Turner will bring it up the floor. Have the ball knocked away. He'll regain the ball, pass it. Gets it over to the corner. Now across the court, 
Turner back with the basketball is going to put up a three-point shot from straight away. Panthers with the rebound. They'll get the ball back up the floor. Kendall Hickerson with the basketball. Gets it over to 23. Hunter Hickerson. Rayleigh gets it back to Hickerson. Back to Rayleigh. Rayleigh gets it inside to Layton. Layton spins. Passes it back out to Hickerson. Looks at a three. Dribbles inside. It'll be passed to Ferguson. Up and in for an easy layup from straight away. Turner with the basketball. Gets it back across the timeline in a hurry. All the way down the floor. Now a foul is going to be called. Be fouled on uh, be number 10. Hunter Rayleigh picking up the first foul of the ball game. 5-19 to play. Devil Summit leads 8-3. to Petrovic will get set to throw this basketball in from the side. Turner with the basketball. He'll be hassled by the Panther defense. Get it inside. Now a loose ball back recovered by Turner. Inside to Petrovic. Petrovic doesn't catch the ball. Layton goes in for a layup. He'll be fouled by Turner hard. And it'll be it'll be a shooting foul. It'll send Layton to the free throw. He'll shoot two free throws. This will be Noah Layton's first trip to the free throw line. First shot is up and in. Nothing but the bottom of the net there. Pushes the lead to six, nine to three. And he'll get his second shot. It's up off the back of the rim. Rebounded by the Pan- by the Panthers, number 23, Hunter Hickerson. And then they're going to throw the ball away. So it's going to be over and back. Number three, Kendall Hickerson tried to save that and could not do it in time. Petrovic will throw it in from right in front of his own bench. Actually, it was number two, Noah Turner throwing it in. He'll get it to number 30, Hagen Dotson. Dotson with the basketball. And he makes a pass, and it goes off the hands of number 23, Baker, and out of bounds. Got a timeout on the floor. We'll take this timeout with him. We'll be right back after this. Darlene and Terry Ott are longtime educators at Ott Enterprises and longtime in politicians in Marion County. We want to make sure that they, with their background in education, they wanted to make sure that each and every athlete had a, had a platform to play on and be seen. This allows parents, grandparents, and any extended family from Flippin, Cotter, Yevil Summit, Lead Hill, and Ozark Mountain to, for those extended family members to see their their, 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 fam, their kids play. And, you know, if a parent can't make it to the game, at least they can check it out. So we just want to make sure that we thank Terry and Darlene Ott for their support. And they want to say congratulations and good luck to all student athletes in North Central Arkansas. Ball will come in to number three, Kendall Hickerson. Hickerson will dribble and set up the offense. Gets it to his brother. Looks inside to Ferguson. Now he's going to dribble inside, put up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Ferguson. Back up and in. No good. And it'll be rebounded by Baker for Lead Hill. Turner with the basketball and brings it back up the floor. Turner might have got away with a carry there, but a lot of high dribbling here. Ball is loose. Be picked up by Layton. Layton back down the floor with it. He's looking to dribble inside. Now the ball will be punched away. By the Tigers. Turner will bring this up, pass down into the corner. Back out to the top of the key with Nicholas May. Now the ball will be picked up by Layton. Layton with the pass. And an easy layup by number 23, Hunter Hickerson, on the right hand side of the basketball goal. Pushes the lead out to 11 to 3 for the Panthers. Lemon with the basketball. He'll bring it across the timeline. Looks to set up the offense. Now he's going to hand the ball off to May. May is going to get the ball out to a teammate. Misses the shot. Rayleigh back down the floor. Puts up a layup. It's no good. Rebounded by the Panthers. Shot's no good. Rebounded by the Tigers. Back down the floor on the other end. Ball will be knocked out of bounds. It'll go out of bounds off of the Yellow Summit player to belong to the Tigers. Checking in now will be Landon Kyder as he checks in for number three, Kendall Hickerson. Also checking in will be 
number 22, Trent Purdom. Landon Kyder is number five. Basketball belongs to the Tigers, and it's in the hands right now of Dotson. Dotson at the top of the key, dribbles, passes the ball off to number 13, Alex Gray. May with the basketball over to teammate for a three-point shot. No good. Rebounded by number 23, who puts up a shot. Caden Baker, the three-point shot. Landon Kyder with the basketball. Quickly back up the floor. Kyder will get the ball back out to Hickerson. Hickerson will put the shot up. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by the Tigers. Brought back down the floor. 11-6 to six is your score. Two minutes and 36 seconds to play in this first period. Dotson with the ball, passes it into Baker. Baker puts up a shot, but he's going to travel before he can put that shot up. It was no good anyway. Checking in for the Panthers now will be number 14, Bryce Ott. Checking out will be number 10, Hunter Rayleigh. Landon Kyder will bring this ball up the floor for the Panthers. He'll cross the timeline, goes to the left side, back to the center of the floor. Looks, finds Purdom. Purdom will dribble it out to the, towards the center of the floor, kick it over to Hickerson. And then Hickerson will put up a shot. It's no good, but he's going to be fouled on the shot. He's fouled, and he'll take two free throws right here. Your score with 2.06 remaining in the first period, Yellville Summit is 11-6 for the Lead Hill Tigers. Hickerson's first shot is up. It's in. Nothing but the back of the rim falls through the net, makes the net swing. He's got one more shot. Chance to push it to 13-6 to and a seven-point lead. Rattles around the rim and falls through. They're going to call a lane violation on Yevil Summit. Well, the lane violation is called, but now the ball is going to go out of bounds as Baker falls out of bounds. It's not Baker. That's number 13. Check it. Alex Gray will fall out of bounds. They're checking the score now. Referee's going to check this score on the floor. Landon Kyder, number five, number 12, Noah Layton, number 22, Trent Purdom, number 23, Hunter Hickerson, and number 14, Bryce Ott for the Yellow Summit Panthers. Kyder with the inbound pass. He drives straight to the rim, puts it up and in, up and no good. Tipped back in by Hunter Hickerson. Two points for the Yellow Summit Panthers, they, who lead 14 to six. They got an eight-point lead here in the first half. Time's ticking away. Pass is going to be out of bounds on May. May will lose that pass as it goes off his hand and out of bounds. That was after they tried to save. Let Hill tried to save it and couldn't do it. Now Landon Kyder will bring the ball up the floor. He'll come out. He'll be challenged by number five, Coda Lemon. Gets it over to Hunter Hickerson. Hickerson will get the ball back to Kyder. Also checking in was number 24, Noah Cantrell. Hickerson's going to hit a three-point shot. Going to make the score 17-6, to six, an 11-point lead for the Panthers here in the first period. May's going to put up a three-point shot for the, for the Tigers, and it'll be good. Tyler brings the ball back up the floor for the Panthers. Action quickens. Tyler with the ball over to Hickerson. Hickerson puts up another three. It's no good. Purdom fights for the rebound. There's going to be a foul called. Is it on Purdom? And it is. That could have been as easily on Turner as he was over the back. Either way, it was a hustle play for both teams. Ball will come into Lemon. Lemon looks to dribble it up. He'll be guarded by Kyder. Kyder on him like a blanket. Now Turner with the basketball. May now gets the pass over to 
Baker. Baker looks to shoot it. Not a Lemon passes it out to May. Back over to Baker. Players falling on the floor. Baker get finds Turner for a three-point shot, and it's good. 17 to 12 now is your score. Under 30 seconds to play in this first half, or first period. Batter with ball gets it back over to Hunter Hickerson. Batter will come to the center floor and take the pass. Cody, Cody Lemon on him. Back over to Hickerson to Kiter. Back over to Noah Cantrell. Hickerson with a three-point shot from the wing. No good. Lemon with the down. Will draws this with the rebound. Gets it back down the floor. No the basket put up by number 23, Caden Baker. Is no good at the end of the first period, 17 to 12. Yellville Summit leads this ball game. Those are an associates there in Yellville on Highway 14. Get out there and check them out. If you've got any tax questions, whether you're a, a, a county bit, a county or a city, whether you're a personal business, if you if you're just a person, get out there. They can answer any of your questions. So can the rest of them in the office, and they'll take care of you just what you what you need and keep you out of trouble with the IRS. They're located on 14, just south of Highway 62, 412. Jason Azarenko is running for state senate our state representative, but he's not trying to tell you that that's why he's doing this. He wants you to, he wants you to know that the reason he does this is to give these kids a platform so that the parents, grandparents, anybody that's an extended family member that can't get to the game, this is a way for you to see who's playing and what, and how well they're doing. So he'll appreciate your vote, but he's, he's doing this so that the kids can be seen. Noah Cantrell gets set to throw this basketball in. He's going to throw it in to number three, Kendall Hickerson. Hickerson will get it over to number 12. Noah Layton back to Hickerson. Hickerson's going to try to drive, puts up a layup. It's good on the right-hand side. Hickerson drove the right-hand side of the floor, got the ball on the glass, and it fell through. Turner now with the ball as he comes across the timeline, gets it down to Lemon. Lemon drives the baseline, tries to do the same thing, kicks it out. May with the ball, dribbles and drives inside. He's going to count the basket and be fouled as the ball goes through. The foul will be on number 24, Noah Cantrell. That'll be his first foul of the ball game. 7-31 remaining in the first half, 19-12. to Yellville Summit leads this game. May will be at the line to shoot an end one, checking in for the Lead Hill Tigers will be number 30. Hagen Dotson may will get his and one try right here. Rebound Noah Cantrell after it was tipped by Ferguson. Now it's knocked away a couple of times. The Yellow Summit comes out of there with the basketball, and we're going to have a foul. Looks like this is going to be on number zero. That'll be on May, Nicholas May. On, this, on the side of the gym we're sitting on to broadcast this, we've got a full house of Yellow Summit fans. Across the way, there's some more fans, just not quite as full of house. Laden with the basketball out to Hickerson. Hickerson's going to drive right down the middle of the lane, put it up from the left side, and in. 21-14 is your score. Seven minutes to play in the first half. Hagen Dotson brings the ball back up. He's going to get away with a carry there. Turner over to Baker. Back to Turner. Over to Lemon. Lemon doesn't see May, who's open in the corner. Baker now. He's going to get it over to May. May's going to try to dribble in. Pass it over to Turner. Turner's going to put up a layup. A little too hard on the glass. It's no good. And we're going to have a foul on the floor, but it's going to be on Yellville Summit, and it'll give the ball. The Lead Hill will retain possession. Turner will get set to inbound this ball on the baseline. May drives towards, cuts towards the basket. Now he gets it into Lemon in the corner. Lemon's going to try to drive into the lane, pass it out to Baker over to Dotson. Dotson with the basketball. He's going to have to dribble or pass. He does. He dribbles, gets it over to Lemon to Turner. 
Back to Baker in the corner. Baker's going to get it to Lemon. Lemon's going to put up a three-point shot. It's going to be off the rim. No good. And Purdom was going for the re rebound. It was a loose ball rebound. And the foul is going to be called against Turner as he interfered with it. Throwing this ball in will be Rayleigh. He's going to throw it into Hickerson. He'll throw it into Kendall Hickerson. Kendall Hickerson brings the ball down across the timeline. Now he'll be guarded. He'll back off of him. Cantrell cuts across, gets the pass. Back to Hickerson. Hickerson looks to set up the offense. Now he dribbles in the Euro step over to Ferguson. Back to Hickerson. Puts up a shot. It's no good. Loose ball on the floor. Going to be out of bounds off of Yellville Summit. And you can tell the Yellville Summit fans do not like that call. That looked like it went out of bounds with two players right there, one from Lead Hill and one from Yellville Summit. It looked like it went out off of Lead Hill player, but I'm not on the floor. I couldn't tell you who it went out on. Dotson with the ball, comes across the timeline, gets the ball punched away, but it's going to be – safe for him to touch it, and it won't be over and back. Lemon now with the ball. Spins, gets it out to Dotson. Dotson behind the three-point line will dribble down to the baseline, puts up a layup, and it's good off the le left-hand side. Kendall Hickerson brings the ball back down the floor. Finds, no, uh, finds Rayleigh wide open for a three. That'll make the score 24-16. Yellville Summit leads with 5-12 to play in the first half. May with the ball. Gets it punched out. Now there's a scramble. Comes up. Number 11. What Grazes comes up with it over to Lemon. Lemon's going to dribble. Tries to pass it, and it's going to go out of bounds on Lemon. Yellow Summit will have the basketball coming back into the game. Will be number 23, Hunter Hickerson. He'll come in for Noah Cantrell. We got a timeout on the floor. Led Hill's going to call a full timeout. We'll take this time to tell you about Twisted Sisters over, over here in Flippin'. Look for those blue-green blue, blue green parking stops. If you're a guy, you go in there and you, get it, you tell her what kind of haircut you want, she's going to be able to do it. Jennifer will take care of you, and they've got people in there that will take care of women's nails, hair. They can do dye jobs. Whatever you want done, they can take care of it. Look for those blue-green parking stops on Main Street in Flippin'. Carolyn's Razorback Ribs over there on Highway 62-412. If you're looking for some good food on a quick and get it quick, you can go over there to, to uh, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, and she'll take care of you. She'll get you brisket, ribs, whatever you want. And she can, they've got spicy sauce. They've got regular sauce. Whatever you want, they'll take care of that and get you back to work on time. They've got homemade desserts, and they'll take care of that and get you served with some ice cream or dessert. Hey, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs right there on 62412 in Yellville. We're back here to play. 24-16 is your score. Yellville Summit leads this ball game. 4.57 to play in the first half. Kendall Hickerson's going to bring this ball up the floor. Crosses the timeline. Hunter Hickerson's in the corner. Rayleigh passes it inside to Layton. Layton puts up a shot hard off the glass. It's no good. A loose rebound will be picked up by Dotson. Dotson brings it back up floor. Thinks he's got a lane, a shot to the, uh, through the lane. Didn't make it. Now Layton back down, the, back down the floor in a hurry. Looked to get it to Kendall Hickerson. Got it over to eventually. Kendall Hickerson gets the ball, puts up a three-point shot. It's no good. May with the rebound. Dotson will bring it back up the floor for the Tigers. Panthers lead, 24-16. Ball's knocked away by Hunter Hickerson. He's got a runaway layup to the goal. It's, it's a good, up and good, 26-16, 10-point lead for the Panthers. Rogers is going to bring this back up the floor in a hurry. I'm sorry, Alex Gary brings this, brings this back up the floor. Dotson with the ball. He's going to put up a shot. It's partially blocked. It'd be Hunter Hickerson again. He gets the shot up. It's no good. Kendall Hickerson tries to get the rebound. Can't get that. Now we've got a fight for the ball, and it's going to end up in a Yellow Summit foul, and it looks like it's going to be Kendall Hickerson with the foul. The ball will belong to the Tigers. It's not a shooting foul. It was a loose ball foul on the floor. 
Gray ties his shoe. Petrovic checks back into the game for the Tigers. Baker on the floor. May and Turner for the Tigers. Back down on the other end of the floor. Petrovic with the ball. Tries to pass it to Turner. Misses. Now come, Rayleigh comes out of there with the ball. Puts up a shot. He's not going to make it, but he's fouled on the shot. He's going to be fouled. He's going to the line to shoot two. And we'll see if this foul is on number zero, May. And that'll send number 10, Hunter Rayleigh, to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. First free throws up and nothing but the bottom of the net. Ferguson will check out. Trent Purdom checks back in. On the floor for the Panthers, Kyder, number 12, Noah Layton, number 10, Rayleigh, Hunter Rayleigh, number 23, Hunter Hickerson. Second free throw is up and in. That'll push the lead out to 28 to 16, a 12 point lead now for the Panthers. Petrovic gets ready to throw this ball in. He'll get it into Lemon. Now, Lemon with the basketball is going to bring it up the floor. He'll be guarded by Kyder. Kyder will get the ball over to. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Petrovic with the ball, puts up a three-point shot, and it's good. Kyder now brings the ball back up for the Panthers. 28-19 is your score, 309 to play in the first half. Heard them down to Hickerson. Hickerson across the floor to Kyder. Kyder at the top of the key, gets it back over to Hickerson on the left side. Down to Layton. Layton across the floor to Purdom. Purdom's going to put up a three-point shot. It's off the mark, off the rim. It'll go out of bounds. On a smart heads-up play by Noah Layton, he'll throw the ball out of bounds off of Layton, off of uh, Petrovic's knee. Bryce Ott checks back into the game for the Panthers. They're going to call a foul on number 22, Trenton Purdom, as he tried to push Petrovic out of the way and get position, committing the foul while while trying to do that. Lemon with the inbounds pass. He'll bring the ball up. He'll be guarded by number 12, Noah Layton. Gets inside, puts up a shot. It's no good. Hard off the glass. It'll be rebounded by number 14, Bryce Odd. Bryce brings the ball back up the floor, gets it over to Layton. Tyler puts up a three-point shot from the right side of the floor. It's no good. Rebound will be May over to Lemon. Now Lemon will bring the ball back up the floor. Guarded by Hickerson. Petrovic with the basketball over to May. May will put, get inside, put up a shot. It's too hard off of the rim. Bryce Ott with the rebound. Landon Kiter with the basketball. Brings it back up the floor, crosses the timeline. The Panthers will set up their offense now. Kiter's being really guarded hard by number 13, Alex Gray. Bryce Ott, Kiter with the ball on this near side in the, in the wing. Into number 12, Noah Layton. He gets it, tries to get it inside to Kyder. It'll be a runaway. They're going to pull it back out. It was May coming down the floor trying to get that rebound or that layup. It ends up being Baker with the layup. 28 21 is your score. Landon Kyder brings it back up the floor on the inbound pass from Layton. Heard him around to Hickerson, or to Ott, back to Hickerson, over to Purdom. Now Purdom looks for. Somebody to pass to gets it over to Ott to Hickerson. Hickerson in the corner gets it inside out to Purdom, who puts up a three point shot. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by Bryce Ott out to Cotter, or uh, I'm sorry, out to Kiter. Kiter will get the ball inside and it'll go out of bounds off of Petrovic because he's trying to go for the steal. Loses control of the ball as it goes out of bounds off his fingertips. Hickerson and Cantrell will check back into this game. Kendall Hickerson and Noah Cantrell both checking back in for the Panthers. Checking back in for the Tigers will be Will Grazes. Fighter looks to throw this ball inbounds. Gets it into Kendall Hickerson. His brother on the other side of the floor gets it back to Tider. Tider gets it up. Tries to get it out to Hickerson and can't get it there. Hunter Hickerson was in 
was there was a player in between them, and he got the ball. Lemon on the other end puts up a layup. 28-23 is your score, under a minute to play. Under a minute to play in the first half. Yelva Summit leads this ball game, 28-23. They have the ball. Purdom drives the, line, drives the baseline, tries to put up a shot. It's going to be blocked by Petrovic and out of bounds. Ball will belong to the Panthers. Purdom will check out, and Ferguson will check back in. Noah Ferguson, number 33, will check back into this game. Hunter Hickerson with the three-point try. No good. Ball is rebounded by Petrovic. After Lemon, Lemon's going to push it back down the floor in a hurry. Three Panthers around him. Brazos with the ball. Or Gray, rather, with the ball. Brazos now. Ball's going to be thrown out. of Almost it was thrown away. And Landon Kyder tried to save it. And the ball will go out of bounds off of him because he stepped on the base on the sideline. It'll be Tiger basketball, 7.1 to play in the first half, 28-23, Yevil Summit leads. Petrovic throws it into May. May will get it down into Baker. Baker looks to shoot it, can't get it up. Petrovic will put up a three-point shot. It's no good. The basket wouldn't have counted if it was good. We've reached the halftime score, 28-23. Yevil Summit leads this at the half. We'll be right back.
We're back here at halftime. We want to let you know that the halftime show is brought to you by Allen's Grocery. And, you know, today is the day. Get out there for that one-day sale. There until 9 p.m. tonight. You can get out there and you can get you some New York Strip steak, twin pack, $8.88 a pound. Heck of a deal there. You can get your 80-20 ground chuck, three eighteen a pound. Boston, uh, bony and Boston butt pork roast. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a good Sunday. That's a good Sunday dinner. Get you some potatoes to go with that roast. Put it in there. Cook it on a, in a crock pot while you're at church. Nothing better than that on a Sunday afternoon. They've also got bottom round roast, four sixty-eight a pound. Bone-in split chicken fryers, uh, fryer breast. They're a dollar eighteen a pound. I don't know. About anybody else, but with inflation being what it is, it's hard to imagine $1.18 a pound. Allen's is located at the uh, four-way stop in stop sign. There's the four-way stop there in Yevil in Summit. Get out there, check it out. They can get you those deals and much better, or much other deal, many other deals, and they can get it. You can get the meat cut as thick as you want it. Go out there and see Tony and Isaac and the rest of the crew, and they'll take care of you and get you just what you want to get. Thank you, Allen's, for sponsoring the halftime show. I have to remember that the half times in basketball are much shorter than they are in, base, in uh, football. Two teams have come back out onto the floor. As you see, the Panthers coming out now. Coaches are come, finishing to come out, and we will get this started in less than a minute. We still don't have any officials out on the floor, but we'll make sure that we get some of those and get everything taken care of. We're here in flipping at the Arvis Tournament. This is an annual tournament played by these local teams, and they play hard for bragging rights. On the floor for the Panthers will be number 10, Hunter Rayleigh, number 33, Noah Ferguson, number 3, Kendall Hickerson, number 23, Hunter Hickerson, and number 12, Noah Layton. For the Tigers, it'll be number 13, Alex Gray, number 5, Coda Lemon, number three, number 0, Nicholas May, Petrovic will be back out there with number 34, and Baker is number 23. We're going to have a tie, a tie up right away as the ball will belong to the Panthers with the lead hill bringing the ball inbounds for the second to start the second half. Kendall Hickerson will bring this ball up the floor. They'll set up the offense on the other end. Now Hunter Rayleigh gets, tries to get the ball back over to Kendall Hickerson. Steal by the Tigers. It'll be Lemon with the ball. It'll be knocked away from him by number 12, Noah Layton. May is going to get set to bring this in right in front of the scorer's table. He'll try to be getting it into Turner. Turner in the backcourt. Kendall Hickerson guards him. He dribbles back to the center of the floor, passes it to Baker. Baker with the basketball. Baker will get a screen from Petrovic over to number 13, who's going to hit a three-point shot, Alex Gray. Kendall Hickerson will come back to the floor quickly with the basketball. 28-26 is your score early in the third period. Rayleigh gets it to Layton. Layton inside the lane. Now it'll be Kendall Hickerson driving the baseline over to... Rayleigh, who puts up a three-point shot, no good. Tigers with the rebound. Gray with the basketball. He'll bring it back across the timeline. It's across center court. Screen from Petrovic. He'll be guarded by Ferguson. Now Ferguson will go off and get Petrovic. Petrovic looks to put up a three-point shot, and he hits another one. They take the lead, 29-28. Quick timeout. Be a 30 second timeout for the Yellow Summit Panthers. Led Hill is taking the lead here early in this, in this third period. Terry and Darlene, I want to say they want to wish these athletes the best for their 2020, 2023, 2024 school year. And they want to wish all of them good luck with a special good luck to Bryce, Michaela, and Brooke Ott on their endeavors in 2023, 2024. They're longtime educators, and they want to make sure that there's a platform for each and every one of these students from Mod Enterprises to come out here and play. Panthers will inbound this ball. 
It'll be Hunter Rayley getting set to throw this in. He'll throw it in to Kendall Hickerson. Hickerson will pass it over to Layton. Layton on the left side of the court. We'll get it back to the center to Kendall Hickerson. Hickerson will look inside, can't find anybody. Gets it to Layton on the right side. Down in the corner to Rayley. Over to Hunter Hickerson. Hunter Hickerson gets trapped on the baseline. Gets it over to Layton. Puts up a shot. It's no good. Ferguson will put up a shot that's blocked. And Tigers come down with the basketball and come back down the floor. Baker gets it to Gray. Gray will dribble the ball down to pass the ball to May. May gets inside. He's going to be called for a walk. He did two Euro steps and, get, and got called for it. Euro step is where you hold the ball up and you actually travel, but they don't call it if it's just one. When you do the second one, that's when they look at it a little differently. Hickerson over to Layton down to Rayleigh in the corner. Back over to Kendall Hickerson. Kendall Hickerson dribbles and drives inside the lane, puts up a layup from the left side. It's good. Panthers back on top by one, 30 to 29, with 5.33 to play in the third period. Turner with the basketball, goes behind his back, gets it over to Gray. Gray with the basketball now, dribbles to the other side of the floor, down to May in the corner. May will drive the baseline, kick the ball out to Turner. That almost an over and back, but it's thrown away and it's thrown to Hunter Rayley, who puts up the shot. They're going to call a charge. They're going to call a charge there, and that is not going to be a favorable call for these fans sitting on this side. May is going to throw this ball in as they call him getting back down there on the baseline. He throws it in. He throws it in to Gray. Gray's going to dribble. He'll be guarded by Layton. Gets across the timeline. Now Kendall Hickerson reaches in. Petrovic with the basketball. The Evel Summit fans wanted to walk. We got a Baker driving inside. Three-point shot put up by Turner. It's no good. It'll be knocked away by May. May at center court. Now it'll be knocked away by Kendall Hickerson down the floor. Puts up a shot. It's no good. But May is going to be called for the foul. That'll send Hickerson to the free throw line for two free throws with a one-point lead, 441 to play in the third quarter. May can't believe that he was called for that. Hickerson's first free throw is up and in. Makes it a 31-29 lead. Got a chance here if he makes this one to push it to three. Shot is up. Hits the front of the rim. Bounces to the back off the rim. Rebounded by Petrovic over to Gray. Or Turner now to Gray. Gray brings it across the timeline. Back to Turner. He looks down at Baker and then dribbles the ball down inside. Gray with the basketball. Gets it over to Baker. Baker with the basketball now dribbles inside, tries to drive the baseline. Puts up a shot on the right side. It's good. 31-31. We're all tied up. Kendall Baker loses, or Kendall Hickerson loses the ball. Turner with it. Drives back down the floor, partially blocked by Layton. Rayleigh with the ball. Now it's back over to Hickerson. Hickerson's going to drive inside. Euro step. Reverse layup and in. 33-31. Panthers lead. Turner with the ball. He's coming across the timeline. Gray now gets it over to May. Hunter Hickerson went for the steal, missed it. Shot up. It's no good. Kendall Hickerson's going to get the long rebound, the long loose rebound, and it's going to be knocked away from him and stolen. Turner now comes back down the floor to Petrovic over to De over to Hunter. Baker, I'm sorry. Gray with the ball now. And we're going to have a timeout. Led Hill is going to call a timeout here. We want to say thank you to all our sponsors. Baxter Regional brings you this, this uh, broadcast. Each time we come on, they'll bring it to you tomorrow. Harry and Darlene Ott and Ott Enterprises bring you the pregame. Dozier and Associates brings you the postgame. Allen's, Allen's Grocery brings you the halftime show. Jason Nazarenko just wants to make sure that everybody is able to see these kids play. Twisted Sisters, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, and North Arkansas College. They've got a knack for that.
Ball's going to be inbounded on this near sideline. It'll be Petrovic gets, gets set to throw this in. Gets the ball into Turner in the backcourt. Over to Lemon, who's checked into the ball game. Kyder's also checked in for the Panthers. Petrovic down inside on Ferguson, dr- tries to back him in, misses the uh, short shot. It'll be rebounded by Layton over to Rayleigh. Rayleigh puts up a three-point shot from the corner, and it's good. 36-31, the, late, the Yelpa Summit Panthers lead this ball game with 2.59 to play in the third period. Turner gets it to Lemon. Lemon gets inside, loses the ball. Now he's on the floor. He's going to be called for a travel as he regained possession of the ball, but he was had his feet moving at the time. He comes up limping. He'll be all right. He's a tough, he's a tough kid. Tider will bring the ball across the timeline. He checked in for Kendall Hickerson. Rayleigh with the basketball. Back over, back cross court to Kider. Kider gets it down to Hunter Hickerson. Back over to Kider to Rayleigh. Rayleigh looks at a three-point shot, dribbles. Now he looks to get the ball. He gets it back to Trent Purdom. Over to Ray uh, to Rayleigh. We're going to have a foul called inside. It looks like it's going to be on Petrovic. On Petrovic, and it is. He's on the floor. Landon Kyder will bring this ball. It will throw this in from the baseline. Heard him cuts. Ball comes into Rayleigh. Rayleigh gets the ball quickly to Hunter Henderson. Hunter Hickerson over to Kyder. Kyder almost throws the ball away. It's stolen by number 23, Baker for Lead Hill. Turner, Lemon. Now Lemon dribbles to the center. Back to Petrovic. Petrovic didn't want, didn't like that shot. Over to Gray. Back to Lemon. Lemon out on at, in the middle of the floor. Gets a, a lot of pressure. Petrovic with a turnaround jumper that bounces all around the rim and falls in. 36-33 is your score. 141 to play in the third period. Got a whistle on the floor. We're going to have Noah Cantrell check into this game. He'll chunk in, check in for Hunter Rayleigh. We're also going to have number 30, Dotson, check in for the Tigers, and he'll check in for Gray. Panthers are going to inbound this on the baseline. Landon Kyder with the basketball, gets it into Purdom. Purdom will get it over to Cantrell. Cantrell looks at Hickerson. Hickerson not open. Inside to Layton. Layton back out to Hickerson. Hickerson makes some room, gets it over to Kyder. In the corner to Cantrell. Cantrell. Gets the ball back out to Hickerson. He was actually trying to hit Hunter uh, Layton, but didn't find him open. Trenton Purdom's going to nail a three from the left side behind the three-point line. 39-33 is your score. Tigers bring the ball back up the floor. Dotson gets it over to Lemon. Lemon's going to put up a three-point shot. It's no good. Noah can't trail with the rebound. Quickly back down the floor. He's going to get inside the lane. Get it off to Purdom. Purdom. Over to Kyder, back out to Cantrell, Hunter Hickerson. Now Hickerson's going to drive, get it out to Purdom. He's going to put up another three-point try. No good, but the rebound was to Noah Cantrell back up and in, 41-33, under a minute to play in the third period. Turner's going to bring this back up the floor. Petrovic sets the moving screen. We got a whistle on the floor. Purdom's going to be called. Ball will be brought in on the baseline. Turner gets set to bring this in. Finds Dotson. Dotson's going to dribble, lose the ball. Now the ball is going to come out to Noah Cantrell back on the other end of the floor. It's going to be blocked. Hunter Hickerson's going to pick up the ball, pick up his dribble, and be knocked away, and it'll be out of bounds on the Tigers. Hickerson gets it into Kyder. Kyder dribbles to the center, back to the right, over to Hickerson, down to Layton, back over to Kyder, center of the floor. Hickerson with a three-point try. No good. Purdom's going to save it, but they're going to say he was on the baseline, and it's going to be Tiger ball. 
41-33, to play in the third period. Turner with the basketball off the inbounds pass from Petrovic. Petrovic calling the play all the way down the floor. We've got a whistle on the floor. Looks like we're going to have foul called on Turner. Gray's going to check back into this game for the Tigers. The ball's, the foul's on Yelva Summit. I guess it was on Landon Kider. Three-point shot by Gray. No good at the buzzer. And we're going to, we've reached the end of the third period, 41-33. Yellville Summit leads here at the Arvis Tournament in Flippin. Got one period to play, and the Panthers are not showing any signs to quit, and neither are the Lead Hill Tigers. They both came here today to play and win this, win this ball game in advance to the championship and the consolation round on Saturday. We'll be here Saturday to bring that to you, and we'll be in Ozark Mountain School District tomorrow for their homecoming at uh, their homecoming games, and we'll see everyone there. We'll bring that to you, and be sure to tune in and watch the homecoming festivities and watch the ball games. Again, we want to thank all of our sponsors, Baxter Regional Medical Center, Odd Enterprises, Dozier and Associates, Allen's Grocery, Jason Mazarenko, Twisted Sisters, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, and North Arkansas College, because they've got a knack for that. They'll get you straight and they'll get you the proper guidance and the proper training that you need or education you need for whatever degree you want. Get out there and check out the knack over in Harrison. Turner with the basketball. He'll bring it across the timeline as he took the inbounds pass in the backcourt. Carried the basketball. This time they're going to call it. That's about the third time he's carried the basketball, and they call it this time. That one was over his head, though. Landon Kider takes the inbounds pass from Kendall Hickerson. Now back to Hickerson over to Kider. Kider will dribble to the right. Gets the ball over to Layton inside to Hunter Hickerson back out to Kendall Hickerson. He drives in back out to Hunter Hickerson. Hickerson's going to pass it across court to Layton. I'm sorry. Yeah, Layton. Hunter Hickerson with a three-point try. It's no good. Rebounded by Turner back down the floor in a hurry. Turner's going to lose control of the ball. Kyder comes out of there with it. They've got a two-on-one, and Purdom is going to – I'm sorry, Ferguson is going to miss that layup. But Kendall Hickerson's going to come out of there with the basketball. Panthers will reset. Get the ball over to on the right side. Hunter Hickerson with the ball. Gets it into Layton. Layton will try to pass it. It's knocked away. Back to him. Inside to Kendall Hickerson. Layton's going to put up a shot. Petrovic is going to block it. It should have been goaltending. Ryder with the basketball. He's going to travel on his way to driving to the basket. He doesn't agree with the call, but that's okay. I don't know of one player that ever agrees with a call. Petrovic will get set to throw this in. Looks like he's going to throw it into Gray. On the floor for the Tigers, Petrovic, Gray, May, Lemon, and Baker. For the Panthers, it'll be Layton, Hunter Hickerson, Kendall Hickerson, Noah Ferguson and number 10, Hunter Rayleigh. Ball comes into Lemon. Lemon will bring it up the floor. He'll be guarded by number 12, Layton. Layton with the steal. Layton with the layup on the other end on the left side. 43-33. They push the lead back out to 10. We've got a timeout on the floor. Led Hill takes the timeout with that steal. Baxter Regional Medical Center over on, in Mountain Home on Hospital Drive. If you've got something ailing you, if you've got, if you need to see the Highland Clinic, get over there and check out Baxter Regional Medical Center. They've got a great emergency room. They've got great doctors and nurses over there, award-winning doctors and nurses. Get out there, and they'll take care of every all your needs. They've got a physical therapy unit that once you once you start healing, they'll get you back into shape and get you almost as good as new. On Hospital Drive in Mountain Home, check out Baxter Regional Medical Center. 
Terry and Darlene Ott, Ott Enterprises, are wildly happy about sponsoring the uh, broadcast here. They want to make sure that everybody at Cotter, Flippin, Yevil Summit, Ozark Mountain, Lead Hill, even Bergman and Valley Springs has a place to play. So we want to make sure that when we travel up to Lead Hill that you can see, you can watch your team play. Or if we travel with Lead Hill to another team or Yevil Summit, you can take you any other city, you'll be able to watch them play. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Odd Enterprises, for helping out with this broadcast. Petrovic will bring this in from the baseline. 6.32 to play in the ball game. 43-33. Yevil Summit leads by 10. Dotson checks back into the game, brings the ball up. He gets it to Gray over to Petrovic. Petrovic puts up a quick three. It's off the mark this time on the left side. Hunter Hickerson will bring the ball back down the floor over to number 10. Hunter Rayleigh, who puts up a three-point shot from straight away. Panthers push their lead out to 13, 46-33. Six minutes to play in the fourth in the ball game. Petrovic with the basketball. Gets it down to Baker. Baker puts in a puts up a layup. It's in. They cut into the lead by two. Kendall Hickerson with the basketball. He's going to dribble and get into the lane. Put up a layup on the right side. It's no good. Rebounded by Petrovic. Now Gray with the basketball. It's going to be knocked away by number 12, Layton. It'll belong to the Tigers, but it was a great hustle play by Layton. Without committing a foul, he was able to knock that ball away. Petrovic will get set to throw this in. He'll get it into Dotson. Dotson will bring it back up, guarded by Kendall Hickerson. He'll spin and get away from Hickerson momentarily over to May, to Baker, inside to Petrovic, over to May. May puts in a layup from the right side of the goal. Kendall Hickerson will bring this ball back up the floor. They'll set up the offense on the, on their end, and the Panthers will look for more points. Layton with the basketball, dribbles into the lane, kicks it out. Hunter Rayleigh with the basket, or with the shot from three-point range. It's no good off the mark, and then a foul is going to be called against the Panthers. It's on the floor, not a shooting foul, so it's going to be an inbounds pass by Petrovic. They'll get it into Dotson, and Dotson will bring it back up the floor. Kendall Hickerson guards him like a blanket. Over to Baker, inside to Petrovic at the free throw line. Ball's going to be knocked away, but they're going to call a foul. They're going to call a foul on, on Layton. It'll be an inbounds pass underneath the basketball goal for the Tigers on their own end. Dotson will throw this in. Ball's going to come into Baker. Baker's going to put up a shot. It's going to be blocked. It'll be blocked by Rayleigh. May loses the pass, and there's another block by Rayleigh. Panthers come back down the floor with Layton, Layton with the ball over to Hunter Hickerson. Back out to Rayleigh. Rayleigh's going to put up a three-point shot. He's going to drain that from the left corner. 49-37, the Elvis on the Panthers lead. We've got a timeout on the floor. Rayleigh saw the got, got the pass, saw the basket, and put it up. Drained the bottom of the net. Those are an associates over in Yellville Summit, over in Yellville is proud to be able to answer any of your questions, your tax questions, whether you're a person, business, or even government. They can take care of any need you, anything you have with the IRS. If you've got a question, all you got to do is ask. Give him a call He's, or visit right there on Highway 14, just south, a block south on, of 62-412. So speaking of being right there in, in Yellville, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, now, I'm telling you, if you want the best brisket sandwich you can have, go in there and get you a brisket sandwich. What I like to do is get the hot, the, the spicy sauce that goes on it. You can't go wrong. I like that with the curly fries and, a, and an unsweet tea. But you go in and get what you want. She's got desserts, and she'll take care of you. She's located on 62, 412, about a block east or west of uh, Highway 14. 
Petrovic is going to throw this ball in from the base from the Panthers baseline. He'll throw it into Gray. Gray will bring it across, bring it back up the floor. He gets across the center line. Now he gets it to Dotson. Dotson looks inside. Petrovic sets a screen for Dotson. Now May with the basketball. May has picked up his dribble, gets it over to Dotson in, in the corner. Dotson's going to try and drive the baseline. Ferguson's going to knock that ball away. Rayleigh gets hit in the face when Hickerson, Kendall Hickerson tries to get it. Out to his brother, Hunter Hickerson. Now back to Rayleigh, over to Layton. Layton's going to dribble back out and set things up. Pass over to Rayleigh. Puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebound by Baker for the Tigers. Dotson will bring this back up the court. Over to Gray. Gray fakes the shot. Back over to Dotson. Puts up a three-point shot, and it's good. That'll cut the lead to 49-40. to Panthers still have a 10-point lead. 3.25 3.25 to play in this ball game. Kendall Hickerson looks to run clock and set up offense at the same time. He's going to dribble the ball out near center court. Now he's going to go to the left side, back to the center, finds Layton. Layton's going to find Layton's going to find Hunter Rayleigh, and he's going to travel as he tries to dribble to the rim. Petrovic will get set to throw this pass in. He'll throw it in to Dotson, and Dotson will bring it back up the floor. Three minutes to play in this ball game. Panthers lead by nine. Baker with the ball, gets it into Petrovic. Out to Gray. Gray can put up a three-point shot off the back of the rim, rebounded by Rayleigh. Rayleigh's going to get the ball back down the floor across the timeline, get it over to Kyder, who just checked into this ball game. Kyder is going to get the ball to Layton on the left side of the top of the key. Spins. Gets it out to Rayleigh. Rayleigh. The Panthers definitely want to run some clock here, but they want to score at the same time. Now Layton with the basketball puts up a mid-range jumper. Gets his own rebound off the front of the rim. He's going to drive in. He's going to be fouled. He's going to the line to shoot two free throws with a nine-point lead and 222 to play in this ballgame. Noah Layton at the at the free throw line to shoot two free throws. First one's up and in. Nothing but the bottom of the net there. 50 to 40. Pushes it back out to 10 with a chance to push it to 11. 222 remaining. Panthers with an 11 point lead. Gray with the basketball and the inbounds pass from Petrovic. He's going to drive across the timeline, be guarded by Kyder, get it over to Dotson. Dotson on the right hand side gets it to Petrovic in the center for Petrovic in the center of the floor. Down into Baker, and Baker puts up a shot. It's no good, but a foul's called. Foul will be called on number 12. That'll be on Noah Layton of the Panthers. It'll send Baker to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. He drains the bottom of the net on the first one. He's got one more. Cuts the lead to 11. He can cut it to 10 here. Two minutes and nine seconds remaining in this ball game. And the Panthers with a 10-point lead, 51-41. Tider with the basketball. He's going to bring it back up the floor. He's going to be guarded hard by Turner. Now he gets it over to Hunter Hickerson. Hickerson's going to drive the lane. Puts up a reverse layup. That's good. Spins it off the glass. 53-42. I believe it should be 53-41, but 53-42 is what's on the scoreboard. The steal by the Panthers. Rayleigh with the steal gets it out. Extended pass out to Kyder. Kyder wants to set up the offense, pulls it back out. He's out by center court, guarded by Turner. Now he's going to dribble in, and a foul is going to be called. Foul is going to be called on number two, Turner. Nolan Turner gets called for that foul. We got a timeout on the floor. Listen, Jason Nazarenko is running for state representative, but he believes every child, should, every child that's a student athlete should have the opportunity to play and for their families to see that. So if they're extended in California, 
South America, wherever they're at, they'll be able to watch this if they just tune in to Echo Sports 4034. They can check it out every game that they play. We cover five, we cover Cotter, Flippin, Lead Hill, Yevil Summit, Ozark Mountain, and even Bergman and Valley Springs on occasion. So you want to get you want to let people know they can check it out on Echo Echo Sports 4034. And we want to thank Jason Nazarenko for giving us that platform and giving these kids an opportunity to play every game and be broadcasted. One minute, 26 seconds to play. 53-42 is the score on the scoreboard. Inbounds will be. It'll be inbounded to Kendall Hickerson. He's going to lose control of the ball. Turner's going to fall down. They've got a five on four. Turner's going to foul again. He's going to foul Kendall Hickerson. And that looks like a pretty forceful foul. We'll see what they call this. It's going to be an inbounds on the sideline. It'll be Layton bringing the ball in. Ferguson tries to set a screen. Now it's going to come into Kendall Hickerson back to Layton. Layton's going to be fouled by Baker, number 23, of Lead Hill. One minute, 17 seconds to play. Each of these fouls resets the 35-second clock. Layton will throw this in. He'll get it into Hickerson. Hickerson will be fouled again. This time it'll be by number two. Nolan Turner. That's three fouls real quick here in this last last of the fourth quarter. Lemon will check back in. He'll check in for Turner. Not sure if he's fouled out. Yeah, that's his fifth foul. He's fouled out of this ball game. Petrovic is going to check in. No, he's not. Coach is calling him back to the bench. Kendall Hickerson at the line to shoot a one and one. First one's up and in. 54. 42 is your score. Now Petrovic and Gray will check back in. They'll check in for number 11, Will Grazes. Second free throws up. It's off the mark, off the front of the rim. Rebound by Petrovic. Gray's going to bring this up the floor. He'll go to the right side of the floor, get it to May. May will try to come back to the center. He'll be met by Ferguson and rerouted. Now May with Lemon with the ball over to Petrovic. He's going to put up a three-point shot. It'll be rebounded by Hunter Rayleigh. He'll be fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot a one-and-one. They'll travel to the other end of the floor and have an opportunity for the one-and-one. Hunter Rayleigh's first one is up, rattles around the rim, falls through, 55-42, 55.7 seconds remaining in this ball game as Hunter Rayleigh gets set for his second shot. Hits front of the rim, rolls to the glass, off the glass and off of the rim, rebounded by Petrovic over to May, May back to Petrovic over to Gray. Gray puts up a three-point shot, no good, rebounded by Ferguson. Hunter Hickerson back down the floor, picks up his dribble, Gets it to Layton. Now they're just going to run as much clock as they can. They've got 28 seconds, 26 on the play clock, and 32 on the game clock. They'll be able to run this down to about four seconds without any, without having to shoot it so far. The ref on the near side of the floor is watching the time clock, and it won't make it won't make any difference even if they take a shot clock violation here. They can't lose this ball game. Lead Hill's not challenging them, and we have a shot clock violation at 8.1. Lemon will get set to throw this ball in. He'll get the ball into Gray. Gray will come quickly across the timeline. Shot clock is off. He was looking for it. Now he's going to put up the shot. It's no good. It was a long three-point shot. Panthers are going to win this 55-42. And they'll advance to the championship game on Saturday. We've got two more games here today. And we'll get set for those and be right be back here shortly. This will give you a chance to take care of anything you need to take care of. 
We'll be back shortly.
Okay, fans, we're back here. We got Yevil Summit on uh, against Omaha. This will be a girls' matchup, and it'll be to make a trip to the Constellation Finals on Saturday. Uh, starting here tonight, we're going to with Yevil Summit. It'll be Abby Methvin, number one; KJ Moore, number twelve; Rory Cobb, number twenty-two; Hannah Hayward, number five; Sierra Burrow is number ten; Cameron Mason is number zero. Riley Hobson, number two, and Katie Gibson, number 14 for the Panthers. The head coach is Charles Melton for the Panthers. And for the Omaha girls, the Omaha Lady Eagles, it'll be number two, Remington Couch, Mystica Tindall, number five, Maddie Pishney, number 11, Anaya Gabriel, number 13, Peyton Matlock, Number 20, Layla Arnold, Anastasia Johnson, number 21, number 30, Clara Offord, and number 32, Molly Couch. On the floor, it'll be K.J. Moore, number 12, Abby Methman, number zero, number one. Number zero will be Cameron Gibson or Cameron Mason, number 10, Sierra Burrow, and number five, Hannah Hayward. For the Omaha Lady Eagles, it'll be number 32, Molly Crouch. Panthers will control the opening tip. They'll get the opening tip, and it'll be Abby Methman going down for a layup. She'll be fouled. She'll be fouled hard. It'll be number two, Remington Crouch. That commits that foul. Also on the floor is number 13, Peyton Matlock. Number 22. Well, I don't have a 22, but anyway. We'll get this as best we can here tonight. Methvin will make one of two free throws, and the Panthers will lead one to zero. Lady Eagles with the basketball is number 10, Maddie Pishney. Out to number 32. She puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by number two, Crouch. And it'll be put back up and in by the Lady Eagles. Abby Methvin will bring it back up, and the Panthers trail by one. Mason with the ball. Over to Methvin. Methvin will drive around the right side. She'll get the ball back out to Burrow. Burrow will get it back to Methvin. Try to get it into K.J. Moore. It's knocked away. K.J. will get the ball to number five. Hayward. Over to Mason. Back into K.J. Moore on a skip pass. And they're going to call Moore for traveling. Clearly, Moore didn't agree with that, but Lady Eagles will bring this ball in. It'll be number two, Remington Crouch, over to number 13, Matlock. Crouch gets the ball back. She'll get it to number 10, Pishney. Pishney loses some equipment and throws it off to the sideline. Three-point shot. Two-point shot, rather. Ball. For the uh, Lady Eagles, Mason will bring it across the timeline. Mason looks for somebody to pass it to. Set the offense up. Haywood with the ball. Methman down inside, puts a layup up, and no good. Gets her own rebound, puts it back up in from the left side. Four to three, early in this ball game. Omaha leads. Omaha with the basketball. Crouch, Pishney, or Matlock, rather. Back over to Crouch. Now it goes to Pishney. Pishney with the basketball. She's looking for somebody to pass it to. Gets it over to number 20, Arnold. She'll get it down inside the, in the corner. It'll be knocked away, and it's going to be stolen by Sierra Burrow. Then she, her pass will be tipped and stolen. Out to Crouch. She's going to put up a three-point shot from the far side, from the right side of the floor. It's no good. Rebounded by number 10, Pishney. Shot goes up. No good. K.J. Moore with the rebound. Mason with the basketball. She gets the ball over to Burrow. Burrow in the corner to Haywood. She's going to put up a three-point shot. It's off the mark. K.J. Moore and Crouch will come down with that, and it'll be a jump ball, it'll be a jump ball and it'll favor the Lady Eagles. Pishney with the basketball. She gets it back down the floor. Eagles, Lady Eagles will set up their offense. 
Ball is going to come across on a skip pass to Matlock. Now it's going to be knocked away and stolen by Mason. Mason on her way to the rim. Hands the ball, tries to hand the ball off to Madison or to Methvin. It'll go out of bounds off of Omaha, and it'll still belong to the Lady Panthers. Mason gets set to throw this in. She'll get it in to Sierra Burrow behind the three-point line. She puts up a three-point shot, no good. Rebounded by Crouch. Crouch will bring this back down the floor. Ball's going to be tipped. Methvin's going to come up with it. Methvin on the way to the goal. Puts up a layup on the right-hand side. It's good. Lady Panthers will take the lead as they lead 5-4 to four now. Four minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first quarter. Omaha will lose control of the ball as number 32, Molly Crouch, falls down. Might be a wet spot on the floor over there because she slipped when she tried to move, make a move. Haywood with the basketball. K.J. Moore threw it in. Haywood back down the floor, gets it to Mason. Inside to K.J. Moore. Over to Haywood. Haywood is looking to dribble and drive. She gets the ball out to Mason. Haywood gets inside to KJ, back out to Sierra Burrow, puts up a three-point shot. It's off the mark, but it's going to be rebounded, the long rebound by Methman, up a three-point shot. No good. Rebounded this time by the Lady Eagles, number 20, Layla Arnold. Number 13 is going to put up a shot. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by Haygood. Haygood is going to bring it back down the floor and find Methvin cutting to the uh, rim. Put up a shot, no good, and rebounded by Haygood. And then Mason's going to tie the ball up, and it'll belong to the pa- Lady Panthers. Cameron Mason gets set to throw this in. She's going to find Methvin up behind the three-point line. Puts up a shot. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by number 13, Peyton Matlock. Matlock's going to lose the ball out of bounds, but it's going to be it's going to be out of bounds. KJ Moore, so it'll belong to the Lady Eagles. Crouch with the inbounds pass over to Pishney. Back, ah, Crouch was on the sideline that time. It'll be Yellow Summit basketball right at midcourt. KJ Moore's going to throw it into Mason. Mason will dribble down, get to Haygood. He gets it inside to Methvin. Methvin tries to back down inside and put it up a shot. It's no good, but she's fouled. She's fouled by number 10, Maddie Pishney. She'll be at the line to shoot two free throws. Panthers lead five to four. She misses the front end of the two free throws. She has one more. We've got 3.28 to play in the first period. Second shot is up. Hits the back of the rim, falls through the net. It's good. Inbounds pass is stolen by Methvin. Shot's going to go up. Shot's going to go up by K.J. Moore. They're going to call a jump ball, and that was an awfully quick call for a jump ball. Law belongs to the Lady Eagles. They'll inbounds. Fishney with the basketball. She'll be guarded by K.J. Moore. She gets to the timeline, passes it. Crouch with the ball. Back to Fishney. Mason, Mason guards her inside the number 13. Matlock back to Pishney over to number 20 Arnold Arnold looks to pass this gets it to Pishney back to Arnold down inside to Crouch steal by the Panthers Methman with a breakaway Methman with the breakaway she's going to be fouled she thought she was going to free throw line that's going to be on number 10 Maddie Pishney I believe that's her second foul Already in this first quarter, two minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first quarter. Methvin with the basketball over to Mason. Mason's going to put up a three-point shot. It hits the rim, bounces off. It'll be rebounded by number two, Remington Crouch. Pishney now with the ball. She's going to be double teamed. 
Now the Lady Eagles get it back on their end of the floor. Notice that number 32, Molly Crouch, stays in the corner and doesn't like to come out. Number 10, Pishney, puts up a shot from three-point range. It's no good. It's rebounded by Haygood. Haygood gets back down the floor. Didn't have numbers, pulls it back out, sets it up. Methvin sends a long three-point shot. It's going to be rebounded by Molly Crouch, given over to Pishney, and Pishney gets it back down the floor. Crouch again gets the ball, gets it over to number 13, Matlock. Arnold gets the ball, and then she throws it away. Ball will belong to the Lady Panthers. Again, right here at midcourt. Mason with the basketball. She throws it into Methvin, right back to her. Hey, good. Ball's going to be kicked by Omaha, and it's going to be Lady Panthers ball underneath the goal. Maddie Pishney is limping pretty good, and the official asks her if she needs some attention. She looks like she's rolled her ankle, and she's going to have somebody, a, a replacement come in for her. It'll be number one. Number 30 is going to come in. Clara Alford is going to come in for number 32, Molly Crouch. Mason takes the inbounds pass. She gets it over to Haygood. Haygood at the top of the key. Haygood looks and surveys the, the court. Gets it to Methvin, down to Mason, back to Methvin. Methvin's going to put up a long three-pointer. It's no good. Haygood gets the rebound, giving up four inches on the on the Remington Crouch and gets up there and fights for the rebound, and then the jump ball is called after she misses her shot, and it'll belong to the Lady Panthers. Mason will get set to throw this in. And Methvin's going to catch the inbounds pass, and she's going to drive to the basketball goal, put up a shot. It's no good. Goes to the to – the, uh, it's going. KJ's going to knock it away. The Lady Eagles had the basketball. They're going to call traveling as KJ was knocked down. She was knocked down and still had, to, had her hand on the ball, so they called traveling. Lady Eagles get set to inbound this pass, this ball. Peyton Matlock with the basketball. Her and Arnold play catch for a second. Back on the other end of the floor. Gabrielle, who's checked into the ball game, gets a pass to number 13, Matlock. She gets it up and in for a basket. 6-6 six, six is your score, under a minute to play in the first period. Methvin brings the ball back up center of the floor over to Haygood. Haygood gets it down to K.J. Moore, over to Methman. Methman puts up a shot. It's no good. Methman fights for the rebound. Can't get it. Comes down to Matlock. Oh, down, quick, down court quickly to Crouch. She's going to put up a shot. It's going to be – it's going to bounce around the entire rim and fall out. But they're going to get the, the Lady Eagles get the rebound. Matlock over to number 20. Layla Arnold puts up a shot. It's no good. Haygood comes back down the floor quickly. Mason with the basketball, puts it up, and it's going to go off the glass and around the rim. Mason with her first points of the ball game. Here goes the, here come the Eagles. They're going to put up a shot quick. Deep three-pointer, no good off the mark, off the top of the glass, and that's going to end the first quarter. First quarter is going to end 8-6 to six with the Lady Panthers leading this ball game. We'll start the second quarter in here in just momentarily. And I believe the Lady Eagles will have the ball to start the quarter. Listen, we want to tell you, back. we appreciate Baxter, Baxter Regional Medical Center, uh, Odd Enterprises. We appreciate Dozier and Associates, Allen's Grocery, Jason Nazarenko, Twisted Sisters, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, and North Arkansas College. You know, they kind of got a knack for sponsoring, sponsoring these games. And we want to make sure that everybody knows we appreciate every sponsor we get. And if you'd like to sponsor, give me a call at 870-736-2451, and we'll get you taken care of there. We're going to be at uh, Ozark Mountain School District tomorrow where the Bears and the Lady Bears will play. We're going to have at least three games on the schedule tomorrow night with the junior game too. So tune in, and we will bring, bring you every game on the schedule tomorrow night from Ozark Mountain. 
We've got an eight to six ball game here. The Yelbel Summit Pan Lady Panthers lead the Omaha Lady Eagles by two points. Lady Eagles are going to have the ball as they're going to inbound it from the far side of the floor. It'll be number 13, Matlock, throwing the ball in. She's going to get it into number 20, Arnold. Arnold is going to pass it right back to her. Now get it back, and she's going to get it over to Remington Crouch. Crouch will dribble back to the center of the floor, give it back to Matlock. I'm sorry, give it back to Arnold. Now Remington Crouch ends up with the ball again around the horn. She gets the ball, tries to dribble inside, puts up a shot. It's no good. Nothing but Lady Eagles on that side of the basketball. They rebound it, put it back up and in. We've got a tie game, 8-8, eight to eight, 7.29 to play in the half. Mason puts up a three-point shot. It's good. Panthers take a one-point lead. Actually, the Panthers take a three-point lead, and we've got a foul on the floor. Foul will be on, Ma on Cameron Mason. Lady Eagles will throw this ball in again. Remington Crouch back over to Matlock. Crouch. Arnold. She's going to get the ball down to Gabriel. Gabriel will get the ball back out, and it'll be Arnold putting up a shot. Matlock, rather, putting up a shot. And then on the rebound, Haygood comes down with it. She's going to be fouled, and the Lady Panthers will inbound the ball. It'll be Cameron Mason throwing this in. Looks like she's going to throw it into Methvin, and Methvin will bring it down the floor. She'll pass it to Cameron Mason right before she comes across the center court line. Sierra Burrow with the ball. Hey, good. It's going to be off of the foot of number 30, Molly Crouch. I'm sorry, Clara Alford. And then it'll be a jump ball, and it belongs to the Lady Panthers. Ball comes into Messman. Messman wanted a foul there, didn't get it. Matlock with the basketball gets a good out outlook, gets the foul ball back. Now she's going to get it down in the corner, number twenty. Arnold Arnold misses the shot, and then it'll be blocked out of bounds as number thirty Alford puts up a shot. Messman blocked that, and they went out of bounds. Ball will come in to number 20, Arnold. Arnold will get it over to Crouch. She'll put up a three-point shot. It's no good. Long rebound. She gets her own rebound. Then she throws it back inside. Haygood's going to pick it up. She's going to bring it back down the floor. Finds Methvin for a shot. Methvin will go up this time. She will get the foul, and it'll be on number two, Remington Crouch. Methvin will be at the line to shoot two with a three-point lead and 6-17 to play in the first half. First shot, first free throw is up, hits the front of the rim, rose to the glass, and falls through. That'll give the Panthers a four-point lead, 12 to 8. Checking it. We'll check who just checked into this game here in just a minute. I can't see her number for her hair. Methvin's second shot is up off the back of the rim and out. It's no good. Remington Crouch gets the ball back down the floor. Arnold inside. Rebound is going to go to Haygood. Haygood's going to find Methman. Methman's going to let some players go by, get it over to Mason. She's going to put up a shot. It's no good. Player that checked in for Yellville is number 22, Rory Cobb. Cobb is a, is a junior. Arnold's going to put this shot up from three-point range. It's no good. Haygood with another rebound. Shortest one on the floor and getting all the rebounds. Methman on the other end with the layup. She puts that in from the right side. Remington Crouch over to Matlock. Matlock's going to get it across the timeline by passing it to number 11, Gabriel. Now the ball's going to be at Alford's hands. Alford's going to get it back to Matlock over to Crouch. Crouch is going to put up a shot, and she's not going to make it because she's fouled. Be two-shot two foul. It'll be on Haygood. Hey, 
First shot by Remington Crouch is no good off the back of the rim. 14 to 8 is your score. Yevo Summit Lady Panthers lead 5-0-4 to play in the first half. Second shot is up and drains the bottom of the net. Mason will bring this ball in. She'll throw it into Haygood. Haygood will bring it back up the floor. She gets a pass over to Mason on the left side. Back to Cobb. Over to Haygood. Now to Methman. Mason. Methman tries to get it inside to K.J. Moore. And the ball is stolen. Remington Crouch will bring it back down the floor. She gets stopped and double teamed at the timeline. Gabriel with the ball. Over to Arnold. Arnold wants Gabriel to move. Remington Crouch. Now to Matlock. Over to Arnold. Crouch in the corner drives a baseline. No good. And it's going to be stolen by KJ Moore. Outlook, outlook pass to Methman. Methman's going to put up a layup. No good. It's blocked by number 13. Matlock. Crouch back down on the other end of the floor. She'll get the ball to number 20, Arnold. Now Matlock with the basketball. Pitt throws it across court. Crouch with a three-point shot from the far side of the field, the far side of the court. Haygood again with the rebound. Out, bounce pass, long bounce pass to Methman. Up and in from the right side. 16-9. The Lady Panthers lead this ball game with three minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half. We've got a timeout on the court, and we'll take this timeout to tell you about Odd Enterprises. And, you know, Odd Enterprises has been in a long-time educators, long-time politicians in Marion County, They believe in politics, rather. They believe that these kids deserve every opportunity to, to play, and they believe that the parents deserve every opportunity to watch their kids play. Extended family, that's the most important thing because they can't, you know, usually they can't get to the games. Elderly family, they can't get to the games most times. So what they do is they make sure that they have a platform to play on. And we thank them for allowing us to give you that platform. They want to say good luck to all athletes and good, a special good luck to Bryce, Michaela, and Brooke on the season. We also want to th say thank you to North Arkansas College. North Arkansas College, they've got a knack for that. Go get out there and see them. If you're a senior, they can advise you on everything you need to do to make your college career successful. They're over there in Harrison, and they can. They also have technical. They've got technical classes that will help you get a job faster if that's what you choose to do. They'll also set you up for a four-year college. They're over there in Harrison on Highway 65. Give them a call, and they'll take care of you today. Omaha inbounds this ball, and it'll be knocked away by K.J. Moore, but it'll go out of bounds. Good defense, good hustle defense there as K.J. Moore knocks that out of bounds. Ball will come in to Arnold. Arnold looked to pass it, and she's not going to make the pass, and the ball will go out of bounds off of Arnold's hands, and Methman was there for that defense. Cameron Mason gets set to throw this basketball in. She'll get it into Haygood. Haygood will dribble back to the center of the floor. Get find Mason on the left side of the floor. Tries to make a pass across the court to Methman. It's no good. Haygood is going to be called for the foul. She thought she had all ball. But she's going to be called for a foul. And it's going to send number 13, Peyton Matlock, sophomore, to the free throw line. Kind of looked like she had all ball, but we'll go with what they call because they're on the court and they can see it better than we can. First free throw is good. She's got one more coming. 16 to 9 is, is your score. Lady Panthers lead this with 321 remaining in the first half. Second shot is up, hits the front of the rim, rolls to the back of the glass. Haygood's going to come out of there with the rebound. She's going to get back down the floor and it's going to be knocked away. It'll be knocked away by Arnold. And out of bounds. But they're going to say it went out of bounds off of Haygood. They've got a better angle than I do on the floor. Ball comes into Arnold. Arnold will dribble to the left. Pass it to number 11, Gabriel. Gabriel will pass it over to number 32, Molly Crouch, who checked back in. Ball ends up on the other end of the floor. 
in the hands of number 11, or 13, rather, Matlock. Now it's in Gabriel's hands. Pass will be dropped and picked up finally by number 30, Clara Alford. Gabriel's going to put up a three-point shot off the mark, but it'll be rebounded by Arnold. Her shot will go up, but it's after the buzzer, and it's going to be half t- be a shot clock violation. Methvin throws this into Mason. Mason will bring it back up the floor. She'll find Haygood inside the K.J. Moore. She sees an avenue to the goal, drives towards the goal. She's no good, but she was fouled on the shot. She'll be fouled by number 32, Molly Crouch. Crouch is a junior. Only one senior on this Omaha team, and that's Tyndall. K.J. Moore misses the front end of the two free throws. She'll have one more right here, leading 16 to 10 and 231 to play in the first half. She makes the second one and makes it a 17 to 10 lead. Ball is tipped by K.J. Moore. Now it'll be in Alford's hands. Gabriel stolen by the by uh, Cobb. Meth been back down on the other end of the floor, put up a shot. It's blocked. She didn't have numbers. K.J. Moore is going to knock this ball away, this pass. Go out of bounds, and it'll be Omaha Lady Eagles ball. But that was a great hustle play on K.J. Moore's part. Ball comes into Arnold. Arnold over to Gabriel. Down to Molly Crouch. Cameron Mason knocks the ball away. Now with Arnold with the basketball, over to Alford in the corner to number 13, Matlock. Gabriel with the basketball over to Molly Crouch. She tries to throw it in. Cameron Mason's going to pick up the basketball on a steal, and she's going to be fouled. She's going to be fouled, and it'll be an inbounds pass for the Lady Panthers, who lead 17-10 to 10 with 141 remaining in the first half. Mason will throw it into Methvin, back to Mason, over to Methvin. Methvin will look to, and pass it back to Mason. She'll put up a three-point shot from the wing, and she'll drain that. That'll push the lead to 10, 20 to 10 for the Lady Panthers. Gabriel with the basketball. She's getting trapped. It'll be a kick ball off of Mason's foot, and the ball will belong to the Lady Eagles, and they'll inbound right here on the center court line. Checking in for the Lady Eagles will be number two, Remington Couch, and number 10, Maddie Pishney. Got a timeout on the court, and we want to tell you real quick about Jason Nazarenko. He believes these kids, every bit of it, believes that these kids should have a platform to play on. He's running for state representative, but these kids are the real story. And so that's why he decided to sponsor them is let everybody see, be able to watch these kids, their extended family. doesn't matter if they're in Argentina. We had one from there. So let's, let's make sure that we thank Jason Nazarenko and he will appreciate your vote, but this is about these kids being able to play. Lady Panthers lead by 10, 119 to play in the first half. Lady Eagles coming out of the timeout. We'll have the basketball, and they'll throw it in from the far side of the field, or far side of the court, on the center on the center line. It'll be Matlock throwing it in. He's going to throw it into Alford, or she's going to get it into Pishney. Pishney's going to get it back to all. Uh, Pishney got it back to Arnold. Now Pishney with the basketball, so he's going to get it to Arnold again. Pishney with the basketball at the free throw line. Passed it out to number 13, Matlock. Ball's going to be rebounded on the miss by the Panthers. Methman's going to overthrow Cameron Mason and throw it out of bounds. It'll be Lady Eagle basketball on their own baseline. Alford gets the basketball. Tries to make a cross-court pass. And it'll be out of bounds on Haygood on this near sideline.
Remington Crouch takes the inbounds pass. Arnold or offered with the shot from the free throw line. She'll put it up. It's good. 20 to 4, 20 to 12. 36.2 seconds remaining in the first half. Methvin with the basketball gets it into Cobb. Cobb is going to be fouled as she catches that pass. And the foul will be on number. I guess they're going to call that on Alford. Number 30. Bob at the line. She'll be shooting a one and one. She misses the front end of it. It's not one and one. She's going to be shooting two free throws. Second free throw is up and in. Lady Panthers lead 21-12. Remington Crouch back over to Matlock. Now with the basketball is Pishney. Pishney loses the ball. Mason comes up with it. Methman with the basketball. She's going to dribble and drive into the lane. She's going to be met by Remington Crouch. Foul's going to be called. I think the only reason the call was that the foul was called there was Crouch didn't have her hands up. She stood her ground. Methman will shoot two free throws. Took a shot to the nose. First free throws up off the back of the rim, no good. Take a shot to the nose. Sometimes it's a little hard to see. She's a trooper, though. She'll stay in there and shoot this second free throw, and she'll make it. 22 to 12, 10-point lead for the Lady Panthers. Arnold with the basketball. She stops right there at midcourt. Gets it over to Pishney. Pishney drives down, puts up a shot. It's no good. Cobb with the rebound. Mason with the pass. We've reached the halftime. 22 to 12 is your score. Listen, Allen's Grocery is located at the at the four-way stop in Summit. If you need some meat, listen, Allen's is having a one-day sale right now. They always have a sale every week that ends on, on uh, Wednesday. So they've just started the new sale today. But they also have the one-day sale today. And like I told you earlier, you can get your twin pack of uh, New York Strip steaks at $8.88 at $8. a pound. That's almost a steal. Ground chuck, 80-20. 318 a pound. I don't know when's the last time I've seen that. Boneless chicken nuggets. Two packs for 888. You get your USD bottom bottom roast for 468 a pound. Go in there. You can get your turkey for a dollar, your best choice turkey for a dollar sixty-eight a pound. You can get a ham, a, a cook's shank portion ham for a dollar eighty-eight a pound. I mean, these are deals that you just can't pass up. You can get potatoes, you can cook all that in there with it, make it a, a great Sunday meal. Even if, but go ahead and get your Thanksgiving meal while it's on sale. You can get your Pepsi products. Uh, they've got the uh, four, four, four six-pack mini cans, four for $13, $13. three two liters for $5, six packs of uh, 16.9 bottles. They're four for 13 right now. You can get your Lipton tea, two two cases for, a, uh, I think that's cases, two 12-packs for $12, and you can get your Doritos, buy one, get one free. You got to get out to the islands at the four-way in Summit. Listen, this, this has been a heck of a night for uh, basketball, and we want to make sure that, you know, all of these kids have, a, have an opportunity to play, and this is a platform we can give them. So we thank all of our sponsors. Allen Summit does the halftime show. Odd Enterprises does the pregame. And Baxter Regional brings you the broadcast. So we want to make sure that if you've got anything, any medical needs, you can get out there to Baxter Regional. And they can take care of your medical needs. They can give you physical therapy. They can get you anything you need done. All you got to do is go over there and find out. Terry and Darlene Odd at Odd Enterprises, longtime educators and 
they will take care of your needs. All you got to do is, uh, I mean, they, they want to make sure that these kids have an opportunity to play and that the extended parents and grandparents, if they're not here, this is a way for them to see their kids play. They want to say good luck to all athletes in North Central Arkansas and a special good luck to Bryce Brook and Michaela Ott. Thank you to, to Ott Enterprises. Dozier and Associates located in Yellville. They're right there on Highway 14, a block south of 62412. Get out there and check them out. If you've got any questions whatsoever about taxes, whether you're a, whether it's your personal taxes or whether it's your uh, uh, business taxes, even, sit, even city and county, they can take care of your – they can answer any of your questions. They're right there on Highway 14, just south of 62412. Flipping Bobcats and the Cotter Warriors boys teams are out on the court warming up. They play next, and we will have that game for you as well before we wrap up this evening. Jason Nazarenko running for state representative, but listen, he wants these kids to be able to be seen, just like the Ots. He wants to make sure that they have a platform and family, extended family can see every one of these kids play their games. That's why he does this. So we want to say thank you to Jason Nazarenko. He will appreciate your vote, but these kids are what's important because they're our future. Twisted Sisters. I can't, I can't stress enough. If you need a haircut, you need to get out of Twisted Sisters. They'll take care of all of your haircut needs. If, if, you get, if you want your nails done, they can take care of that. It doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. They'll take care of your needs right there. All you got to do is look for the blue-green parking stops, and you'll be on Main Street. You'll be there, and Jennifer and her staff will take care of everything you can possibly need in a hair salon. Carolyn's Razorback Ribs over there in Yellville. I mean, they're right there on 62. They're just a block west of the Highway 14. If you want some good barbecue, if you want a special of the day, they've got all kinds of things that they can take care of you, and, they, and they'll make sure that you're good and full by, before you leave. Get out there and check that out on, on Highway 62, 412, just west of Highway 14. Finally, North Arkansas College, they're over in Harrison, and if you need to get your two-year education, if you need to uh, – Get out there and get prepared for a four-year, you know, because you can get your, you can go locally and get your academics out of the way and get ready for a four-year college. You can get, you can study in general studies. You can study in tech, and they've got technology. They've got uh, robotics that'll help you learn and get a good trade, a good trade, and you can get, you can get started working right away. Check out North Arkansas College over there in Harrison because they've got a knack for that. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in about two minutes.
Okay, we're back here in, in flipping for the Arvis tournament. On the floor, we're going to have Mason Haygood, KJ Moore. We're going to have Methvin and Burrow for the Yellow Summit Lady Panthers. We'll have Matlock, Molly Crouch, Maddie Pishney, Layla Arnold, and Remington Crouch for the Lady Eagles. Remington Crouch walks with the basketball. Quick turnover back to Yelville Summit as the Lady Eagles open the second half with the basketball. Methvin will bring the ball up. She'll pass it across the timeline, and she'll find Mason. Mason will get it back to Methvin. Methvin's going to dribble on the right, left side of the floor inside to K.J. Moore. She's going to put up a shot. It's no good, and it'll be saved by Remington Crouch. Lady Eagles, Molly Crouch will get the basketball. She'll pass it down to Arnold, and Arnold will get it over to Remington Crouch. Pishney with the ball. Matlock. Arnold. Pishney. They're going to get it back to Arnold. Over to Matlock. Back across court to Arnold. Puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Methman. Methman back down the floor with the basketball. She's going to dribble into the lane. Put up a layup. It's no good. K.J. Moore can't come down with the rebound. Remington Crouch does. Ball will be tipped and knocked away. Methvin will put up a shot. It's no good, but she's going to be fouled, and she'll be fouled by number 10, Maddie Pishney. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Panthers lead by 10, 22 to 12, with 6.50 to play in the third period. First shot is up and off of the front of the rim for Abby Methvin. She'll have her second shot right here. Off of the back of the rim, no good. Molly Crouch comes down with the rebound. Remington Crouch. Now Methman steals the basketball. Methman on the left side of the floor. She's going to get it to eventually over to Haygood. Back across court to Methman. She puts up a three-point shot and drains the bottom of the net. Panthers lead 25-12. Remington Crouch with the basketball at the center court. Arnold with the ball. Lady Eagles, Molly Crouch is going to throw it away. She throws it out of bounds just over the center court line. K.J. Moore is going to throw this ball in. She'll get it into Mason. Cameron Mason will bring it up the floor. Passes to Methvin. Over to Sierra Burrow. Inside the... Back out to Haygood. Haygood puts up a three-point shot that's no good. Rebounded by Molly Crouch. Molly Crouch will get it over to Pishney. Pishney will try to bring it back up. Going to get a pass to... And the Crouch is going to get it in the corner, put up the shot. It's no good. K.J. Moore with the rebound. Methman comes out of there with the ball. Gets across timeline and wants to set up the offense. Finds Cameron Mason on the left side of the court. Down in the corner, Sierra Burrow. Back across to Methman, down to Haygood. Haygood on the right side. Over to Methman. Mason puts up a three-point shot. It's no good. Molly Crouch again with the rebound. Number 13, Matlock comes out of there and brings it across the timeline over to Arnold. Back to Matlock. Matlock will put up a three-point shot. It's off the mark, and it's going to be rebounded again by Haygood. But she's going to be fouled. Panthers will bring the ball inbounds. Omaha is going to call timeout. We'll take this time to tell you, if you're a junior or senior, you really need to check out North Arkansas College. They're one of the top three community colleges in the state, and you really need to check them out if, you, if you're interested in, in furthering your education after high school. So if you're a junior or senior, get out there and check out North Arkansas College because they've got a knack for that over in Flippin or over in Harrison. Lady Panthers are in the huddle, and so are the Lady Eagles. They're going to come out of this. Pan Lady Panthers come out of the huddle. K.J. Moore, Sierra Moore, hey Sierra Burroughs, Haygood, and Methvin and Mason on the floor. Molly Crouch, Remington Crouch, Arnold, Matlock, and... 
Pishney on the floor. Panthers will bring it back across the timeline. Methvin will put up a three-point shot. It's going to rattle around the rim and out. It'll be rebounded by number 13, Matlock, and brought back up the floor. Molly Crouch will take the pass from Matlock. Remington Crouch now with the ball, gets it over and goes through the hands of Molly Crouch, picked up by Matlock, over to Pishney. Now Arnold with the ball. Good ball movement on the Eagles right here. Into, inside the Remington, Remington Matt, uh, Crouch, she puts up a shot, gets her own rebound on the miss, and then she's going to be fouled. She'll be fouled by Sierra Burrow, number 10. Her first free throw hit the back of the rim, bounce to the front, and bounce out. Molly Crouch and Peyton Matlock will come out of the lane and come back to the other end of the floor. Second shot is up, and it's just over the front of the rim, drains the bottom of the net. Checking in will be Clara Offer as she checks in for Remington Crouch. Methvin with the basketball, gets it across the timeline. Over to Haygood on a great pass from Sierra Burrow. Haygood puts in a layup on the right-hand side. Panthers apply pressure. Molly Crouch with the basketball, gets it to Arnold. Arnold passes it back to Pishney. Over to Alford. Alford's going to get it back across court to Arnold. Pishney now with the ball over to Arnold. She's going to find Alford down in the corner inside to Molly Crouch. She's going to pass it inside to number 20, Layla Arnold. Arnold's going to put it up and in. 27-15 is your score. 3.56 remaining in the third period. Across the timeline, Methvin finds Haygood. Haygood's going to drive in, and they're going to call a blocking foul on Molly Crouch. She took a heck of a shot from Haygood there. Went down fairly hard. But her feet were moving, so it was a blocking foul. Methvin throws it into Moore. Methvin puts up, sets up for a three-point shot and drains the bottom of the net. 30 to 15, the Pan Lady Panthers have taken a 15-point lead. Molly Crouch throws the ball away across the floor. Remington Crouch will check out, check in. She'll check in for Molly Crouch. Mason gets the ball to Methvin across the timeline, back to Haygood. Haygood will get find Sierra Burrow on the, outside the three-point line on the left side of the court. Now over to Haygood, Methvin in the corner, puts up a three, and it's no good. Mason saves the ball. Sierra Burrow picks it up. Out to Methvin. Methvin drives inside, puts up a layup, and that's good. 32-15, Lady Panthers lead with 3-10 remaining in the third period. Foul's going to be called on Haygood. She went for the steal on Arnold and couldn't quite get the, couldn't quite get the ball, but got a lot of body. And so we're going to see the inbounds pass come in from the far side of the court. Offered with the basketball, looks at a three-point shot, passes it down low to Pishney, back out to Arnold. Arnold's going to put up, or I'm sorry, Matlock. Matlock's going to put up a shot, and it's no good. But she was fouled. It'll be on Cameron Mason. She'll be at the line to shoot, too, because she was in the act of shooting. First shot is up. Hits the front of the rim, rolls to the back, and then falls through. Offer to check out of the lane and come all the way to the other end of the floor, about three-quarters of the way down. Second shot's up and in. 32-17 is the score. Mason with the ball at center court, tries to make the pass. Hey, good. Picks it up anyway. Gets it, tries to get it to Sierra Burrow and throws it away. He saw Burrow in the lane and tried to get it there and couldn't quite get it there. Lady Panthers will put pressure on the Lady Eagles. Arnold with the ball over to Matlock. Matlock will throw it down to Remington Crouch. She's going to dribble in. She's going to walk on the way, and that's going to be a turnover back to the Lady Panthers. 
Lady Eagles are putting pressure on the Lady on the Lady Panthers now. Methman back to Moore over to over to Mason. Mason will come across the timeline. She drives to the lane. Passes it to Sierra Burrow. She puts up a shot. It goes over the rim. Long pass for the Lady Eagles as Remington Crouch will put up a three-point shot. It's no good. Sierra Burrow fights for the rebound. Can't quite get it. Alford puts it up and in, up and off of the glass. Now Methman with a breakout. She's going to put it up and in on the right-hand side. 34-17, 17-point lead now. Haygood's knocking this away. Haygood gets the, gets the shot up. It's no good. Rebounded by Arnold. Fishney brings it back down the floor, and it looks like they're going to call a foul on Mason. They are. Haygood will check out, and Cobb will check back in. Rory Cobb checks in for Haygood. Haygood is the leading re leading re uh, rebounder for the uh, Lady Panthers and for the for the entire team, both or the entire game. Matlock loses the ball under the goal. Moore picks it up. Now we've got a loose ball. It'll be picked up by Alford. Alford gets it to Pishney. Alford now is going to be double teamed. They find Remington Crouch on the far side of the floor. She puts up a three-point shot, long off the back of the rim. Rebounded by Matlock. She puts up a shot. She's going to be fouled. She's going to be fouled and go to the free throw line to shoot two. First shot is up and in. Lane's the bottom of the net there. She's got one more shot. Peyton Matlock, number 13, puts it up, and she makes both of them. 34-18, the Panthers lead. K.J. Moore with the basketball. She looks to pass it. She gets it to Cameron Mason, over to Methman. Methman tries to drive and put up a shot. She's going to miss the shot but be fouled. She'll be fouled by number 30, and that'll be Alford, Clara Alford, committing that foul. Methvin at the line, shooting two free throws, one minute and nine seconds remaining in the third period. First shot's up and no good. Got a timeout on the floor by the Lady Eagles. We'll take this time to tell you, Twisted Sisters right here in Flippin, if you look for those blue-green parking stops on Main Street, you can't miss it. She's got a heck of a job. She's done a heck of a job painting everything outside so that it's easy to find. And I tell you, if you talk to anybody that's been in there, they, they Jennifer and her staff does a wonderful job on your hair, your nails, whatever you need done, they'll take care of it and get you, out, get you in and out. I promise I've been happy with every haircut I've gotten there. I think I'll be trying to visit – Visit that place again tomorrow and get my hair cut again. They're right there on Main Street in Flippin'. Check them out. Get your hair done. Carolyn's Razorback Ribs over in Yellville. They're a block west of Highway 14 on 62412. They've got specials of the day. Now, they're closed on Wednesdays, but you go in there any other day of the week, you can get, you can get that special of the day. And I'm sure she'll get you some ice cream or a, or a nice, nice dessert, too. I prefer the brisket with the spicy sauce and the and the, uh, uh, curly fries with an unsweet tea. But get out, get in there, and get what you want, and you'll you'll find that you'll enjoy every minute of it. The located Carolyn's is located right there in Yellville, one block west of Highway 14 on 62 412. Back here at the game, Abby Methens at the free throw line. She has one more free throw. She missed the first one. She'll have one more right here. Lady Panthers now lead 35-19 with 109 to play in the third quarter. Clara, Clara Alford gets it to Matlock. To Pishney. And they're going to throw the ball away. Layla Arnold is going to try to hit Remington Crouch with the basketball on a pass, and she just threw that ball away right over her head.
Cameron Mason takes the inbounds pass over to Methman. Rory Cobb with the basketball over to Methman. Now Mason inside to K.J. Moore on a great pass. It's going to be knocked away by Pishney and out of bounds, and that'll give the Panthers an inbound on the baseline underneath their own goal. Abby Methman gets set to throw this in. She'll get it into Cobb. Cobb will get it to Mason. Mason will dribble back to the center of the floor to Sierra Burrow over to Methman. Methman sets up for a three-point shot. It's no good. Sierra Burrow comes down with a long free throw or wrong rebound as it comes off of the rim. We're going to have Gabriel checking back in for the Omaha Eagles, and Remington Crouch is going to walk with the basketball on her way to the goal. It'll be Panthers basketball underneath the rim. Mason will take the inbounds pass. She'll bring the ball up the floor. She finds Sierra Burrow in the corner. Cobb sitting under the goal, wide open for a two-point shot, 37-19. Under 10 seconds to play in this third period. Gabriel, Crouch, inside to Alford. Now down to Pishney. Pishney puts it up and in on the right side. We've reached the end of the third period. 37-21 is your score. End of three. The Lady Panthers lead this contest. They're playing. These two teams are playing for a chance to go to the consolation finals where they will play Ozark Mountain Lady Bears on Saturday, um, November 18th. Here in Flip and at the main, they'll play in the big gym then, or the new gym as they like to call it. We'll be here for that. We'll also be in Ozark Mountain tomorrow when they have homecoming, and we look forward to that, and we'll bring you all the games on the schedule. We can only do that because Baxter Regional brings you this broadcast, and we want to make sure that Baxter Regional knows how much we appreciate that. If you need some if you need some help, I mean, they've got an outstanding bone and joint clinic. Get out there and they will fix what needs to be fixed, mend it, and then the physical therapy will take care, take care of the rest of it and get you back almost as good as new. Baxter, Host- Baxter Regional Medical Center located on Hospital Drive in Mountain Home. Get out there and check that out. 37-21 at the start of the fourth quarter here in Flippin' at the Arvis Tournament. On the floor to be Mason, Methvin, Moore, Haygood, and Burrow. On the floor for the Lady Eagles, it'll be Matlock, Alford, uh, Remington Crouch, Gabriel, and Pishney. Mason with the basketball comes across the timeline. She gets the ball down in the corner to Methvin. Methvin gets it knocked away by Pishney. Goes out of bounds, and it'll be... Lady Panther inbounds right in front of their own bench. Haygood gets the inbound pass. Now she dribbles back to the other side of the floor, finds Mason back to Haygood. Haygood will dribble back to the right side of the floor, to the rim, puts up a shot. It's no good. It'll be knocked back in by Matlock. Mason picks it up, finds Methman cutting to the lane, and she's going to be fouled. I believe that'll be on Pishney. Ah, they're going to call Remington Crouch for that. So it'll be on Remington Crouch. Mason will get set to throw this in. She finds Sierra Burrow outside the three-point line. Now Mason will put up a three-point shot. She was fouled on the – there was contact during the – during the play and during the shot and no call. Crouch with the basketball. Over to Matlock. Matlock finds Pishney. Pishney will hand it to Gabriel. Gabriel will get it back to Pishney. Over to Matlock. She puts up a three-point shot. It's off the front of the rim. Mason's going to get the long rebound. Back down the floor. She's going towards the rim. Finds Burrow. Back out to Haygood, who puts up a three-point shot off the back of the rim. Burrow thought she had the rebound. Right at the last minute, Pishney jumped in front of her. Now it'll be knocked away by Methman. K.J. Moore on her way to the goal. She's going to be fouled hard by Pishney. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Panthers lead 37-21. Six minutes and 36 seconds remaining in this ball game. And K.J. Moore at the line to shoot two free throws.
First one is up off of the back of the rim and rolls off the front. No good. KJ Moore's got one more try here. And the second one's in. She pushes the lead to 38 to 21. Omaha is going to pass the ball to Offer to offer to get it to Matlock over to Gabriel. Pishney was wide open on the left side and wanted the basketball, couldn't get it to her. Now they'll get it to Remington Crouch. Crouch will get it all the way back across to Pishney. Pishney will get it back to Gabriel. Inside to Alford, back out to Remington Crouch. Uh, Crouch. Crouch again with the basketball, puts up a shot that's no good, and K.J. Moore is going to commit the foul. This foul is going to be on, called on K.J., And it'll send Remington Crouch to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. Hits the back of the rim to the front and it falls through. 38-22. 38-23 now. 6.03 remaining to play. Methman with the basketball on the inbound pass from K.J. Moore. She'll get it over to Haygood. Haygood will, <coughs> excuse me, survey the floor. Dribble to the right, get it to Burrow. Burrow's going to look inside, gets it to Methman as Methman comes out to the corner. Methman dribbles all the way around, goes in, and they're going to say the ball went out on Methman's leg. The ball was knocked away from her. Crouch will check out. Checking back in will be Layla Arnold, number 20. Methman with the steal. She's going into the layup. Puts it up and in. 38, uh, 40 to 30, 23 now. Gabriel with the ball. Comes across the timeline. Gets it back out in the middle of the floor to Arnold. Matt Locke. Over to Arnold. Arnold looks at, gets the ball to Gabriel. Looks inside. Now the ball's going to be, be loose off of Arnold. Mason's going to be fouled. And then a foul will be against Alford. Alford fouled her, trying to steal the ball. And it looks like Matlock's going to come out of this ball game and Molly Crouch will check back in. Cameron Mason comes down the floor, crosses the timeline, gets the ball to Haygood on the right side. Haygood gets it back to Burrow in the middle of the floor, over to Haygood's going to end up with the ball again and put up a layup. She's going to be fouled. And that's going to be on offered as well. First free throw by Haygood is up and hits the back of the rim, bounces to the front, and falls through. That'll make the score 41 23. Her second shot is up and nothing but the bottom of the net on that one. 42-23, 4.59 to play in this ball game. Panthers secure, have the ball, have the game in command right now. Arnold puts up a shot. It's good. It's on the right side of the goal. Now Methman with the ball gets it to Mason. Mason looks to set up the offense, gets it to Haygood. A good surveys, gets it into Methman. Methman dribbles, gets it, gets a layup, a hook shot up. It's no good, but she gets her own rebound, puts it back up, and then she's fouled. She'll be fouled by number 10, Pishney. Maddie Pishney. 428 remaining to play in this ball game. Possession arrow favors Omaha. 42-25 is the score. Not sure what's going on here. Pistons fouled out of the game, and Remington Crouch will come back in. Methman for her first of two free throws. Hits the front of the rim, rolls to the glass, and falls off the left side. No good. And with 428, she'll take her second one. 
Hits the front of the rim. No good. Hey, good. Goes up and gets a rebound. And she'll be tied up by Molly Crouch. Possession arrow does favor the Lady Eagles. So they'll inbound it on the baseline underneath the Panthers basketball goal. Offered with the basketball. She'll get it to Molly Crouch. Crouch looks for somebody to pass to. Gets it to Remington Crouch. Down to Matlock or Arnold. Arnold to get it back to Remington Crouch. And then Alford is going to put up a shot from just inside the three-point line. 42-27, the Lady Panthers lead this ball game. Messman with the basketball, gets it to Mason. Mason dribbles inside, back out to Haygood at the center, at the top of the key. Over to Burrow on the right side, outside the three-point line. Too many Panthers on this side of the field. Now they move Haygood with the ball. Now they've got too many Panthers on the other side. Sierra Burrow comes back to this right side of the floor, gets it to K.J. Moore. K.J. Moore gets it to Methman. She puts up a shot, goes over the rim, no good. Remington Crouch brings it back up the right side of the floor. She'll get it out to Gabriel. Gabriel get it over to Molly Crouch. Inside to Alford, back up to Remington Crouch, and she'll shoot an air ball that will go out of bounds. Time out on the floor. And we'll be right back after the timeout. Lady Panthers have come out of their timeout, and they'll have the same five on the floor. Actually, they won't. They'll have Rory Cobb, who checks in for Sierra Burrow. Lady Eagles will come back out with the same five on the floor. Arnold, Crouch and Crouch, Matlock, and Gabriel. Methman brings the ball down the floor, puts it up and in on the right-hand side. That layup, she drove it all the way down the floor. What well, ball's going to be knocked away. Arnold comes up with it. Crouch now drives in. A foul's going to be called. If it's going to be on Yellville, it'll be on Roy Cobb. And it is. Good foul. Saved the basket there, maybe. Inbounds is knocked away by Mason. Now we're going to have a jump ball. Rory Cobb will go to the floor, and she'll fight with Molly Crouch, and it'll be a jump ball in favor of the Lady Panthers. K.J. Moore will throw this into Abby Methman. Methman will bring it back down the floor. She comes across the timeline. She'll be guarded by Remington Crouch, and she'll go to the line, to the goal and put up a shot. She didn't make the shot, but she was fouled by number 30, Alford. She limps out. She limps out to the free throw line where she'll shoot two free throws. 44-27 is your score. Lady Panthers lead. Two minutes and 33 seconds remaining in this ball game. Checking in for number 30, Clara Alford, will be number five, Mystica Tindall, the only senior on this ball club. First shot go, rolls around the rim a couple of times and is no good. 
Methvin will have a second shot. It rolled around several times. And then she'll drain the second one. 45-27 is the score. Remington Kratz with the basketball. Stolen by Haygood. They've got numbers. Haygood all the way to the goal. She puts up the shot. It's going to be blocked, and she's fouled. Remington Crouch is going to commit that foul. I believe that's going to be number five on her. That wasn't a shooting foul, apparently. Methman misses a three-point shot. But Cameron Mason there to clean it up, gets the rebound, and puts it back up and in off the glass. Crouch on the far side of the floor. Finds Arnold. She puts up a shot. It's going to be blocked by K.J. Moore, and they're going to say that was a foul. They're going to call that foul on Rory Cobb from behind. It'll send the Lady Eagles to the free throw line. And Layla Arnold will have two shots. First shot is up and in. 47-27 47-27 is your 28 is your score. 19 point lead. KJ Moore will check out. Checking in will be number 14. Caddy Gibson. Katie Gibson. She makes both free throws. 47-29. 18 point lead for the Yellow Summit Lady Panthers. Two minutes to play in this ball game. Lady Panthers have this firmly in control. And we'll tell you right now about Allen's Grocery there at the four-way, four-way and Summit. You got, if you, I'm telling you, if you're not sure what you want to have for dinner, go in there. They've got dinners pre-made. All you got to – or not pre-made, but pre-put together. All you got to do is go in there, pick out the dinner you want, and they'll get you, they'll get you taken care of. If you want, if you if you know what kind of if you know what you want for dinner, go in there. And if you know what cut of meat you want, they're going to cut it to that, to that cut, and they're going to cut it as thick as you want it, or as thin. I recommend the pork chops. The butterfly pork chops are really good. Get in there to Allen's and check it out. Isaac and Tony will take care of you. They're located right there at the Four Way in Summit, Arkansas. Lady Panthers will come back out on the field, uh, out on the court. Methman, Haygood, Mason, Cobb, and Gibson all on the floor. Anastasia Johnson checks in for the Lady Eagles. Meth. Riley Hobson checks in for the Panthers. Shot is up by Mason. It's good. The three-point bucket, 47-29. I'm sorry, 50-29. Back on the other end, Gabriel with the basketball. Now Arnold. Back over to Gabriel. Inside to Molly Crouch. Anastasia Johnson puts that shot up. It's going to be off the mark, and it's going to be a foul called on the floor on Hobson. Arnold gets set to throw this in. She'll throw it in to number five, Tyndall. Tyndall will get it over to Johnson, back to Gabriel, to Tyndall, to Crouch. Now Crouch will throw the ball away. It'll be over and back for the uh, Lady Eagles, and the Lady Panthers will have this ball. 105 remaining, 50-29 is your score. Yebel Summit looks like they're going to win this basketball game and advance to the championship of the consolation round. Mason with the basketball, gets it across court to Hobson. Hobson gets it down to Haygood, over to Mason. Mason puts up a shot. It's no good. She gets her own rebound, puts that up. It's no good, and the rebound is a scramble on the floor. Possession arrow is going to favor the Lady Eagles, and it's going to be a jump ball, Lady Eagles basketball. Molly Crouch will throw this into Arnold. Arnold will bring it back up the floor in a hurry. She gets it down to Johnson. Johnson looks 
would put a shot up. She gets it back to Arnold. Arnold puts up the shot. Hobson will come down with the rebound. And then she'll lose the ball out of bounds. Molly Krauts will take the inbounds pass back over to Arnold. Then the ball will be stolen by Mason. Out to Hobson. Hobson down the floor. Loses the ball as it's knocked away. Johnson comes up with the basketball. Hobson again gets the steal. Puts up the shot. It's no good. But she's fouled. She's going to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. Interesting story about Hobson is she's a champion rodeoer. She's won more saddles this year than she's got horses to ride them. Hobson's first free throw is up and in. She pushes the lead to 51 to 29. She pushes, she misses the second one. It falls off the left side of the rim. Arnold will bring the ball back up the floor for the Lady Eagles. Johnson with the basketball at the crouch. Crouch over to Kendall. Kendall will throw the ball away as it goes off the hands of Crouch. Lady Panthers basketball on the far side of the floor. Mason will throw it into Haygood. Haygood will take the ball and dribble it out. 51-29 is your final score here tonight. And the Lady Panthers will advance to the Constellation Championship on Saturday. We're going to take some time to gather some schedules or gather some rosters, and we'll be right back with you as soon as we do that for the pregame for the next game. It'll be the Flippin' Bobcats versus the Cotter Warriors boys matchup, and that'll be for the final chance to see who goes to the final finals on Saturday. Back after this.
All right, we're going to be back here tonight for the final game of the evening. It'll be the Flippin' Bobcats here in Bobcat Country at their own tournament, uh, hosting or playing against the Cotter Warriors. Cotter Warriors will line up in the blues, flipping the line up in the whites, and we'll see. We'll get this game kicked off here in just a few minutes. It's like David Rogers is going to be one of the starters for the Cotter, number, 30, number 35. Uh, Josh Miller will also start, number 11, Ryan Benedict. And we'll get the other two for you here momentarily, number 25. It looks like Braden, Braden Adams and number 13, Kobe Woods. For the Bobcats, we'll see who they send out to the floor. Looks like sending that going out to jump will be number 11, Ryan Benedict. It'll be number four, Josh Robbins, or Robbins. It'll be number 32. Hamilton, number 13, Downs. Cotter's going to control the tip, and they're going to immediately get the layup on the, the far end of the school score by number 13, and that is Kobe Woods. Flippin's going to miss their shot, get the rebound, put it up, and it's no good. It'll fall off the front of the rim by number 23. Back on the other end, it'll be Cotter with the basketball. Number 35 with the basketball. He'll get it out to Benedict. Ryan Benedict with the basketball, number 11. Inside the number 23, and it's up and in. That'll be Cole Kilton. Bobcats will come back down the floor in a hurry. Trailing four to zero early in this ball game. They'll get inside, put up a shot. It'll be off the left side and fall, and he'll get his own rebound, put it back up and in. That's number 32, Hamilton. Warriors drive, trying to drive inside. Their coach said they had a young team, but we'll see what that means. Young teams can win just as much as old teams can. Both of these teams are young and athletic. Warriors with the basketball, drives the baseline. Now he's going to stop and put up a shot. It's going to be rebounded by number 23, Glenn, for the Bobcats, and he'll bring the ball back up the floor. Bobcats with the ball on their end of the floor, running their offense. They get it inside to Hamilton. Hamilton kicks it back outside. Robbins with the ball. Robbins is going to drive the baseline. Put the shot up. It's no good, but it'll be back, put back up and in by Hamilton. 4-4 four, four is your score. We're early in this ball game with 5.53 remaining in a tie game. Otter with the basketball. Dribbles around. Now he's going to dribble into the lane. Number 23 with the basketball, David Roger. He kicks it out to number 35, Josh Miller. Three-point shot off the mark. It'll be rebounded by number 23 for Flippin, and that'll be Glenn. He'll bring it back down the floor. Kicks it over to the side, the left side. They find Robbins, and then the ball is knocked away out of bounds on Cotter. Cotter fans let everybody know they're here. Robbins will set a screen. Hamilton will get the inbounds pass, kick the ball out. It'll, it'll be a cross-court pass. Downs with the ball. 
and Glenn's going to hit a three-point shot, and that'll push the, that'll put the Bobcats in the lead, seven to four. On the other end of the floor, the Warriors with the basketball. They're going to spread the ball around the floor, put up a shot. It's no good. Hamilton will come down with that rebound. Get the ball ahead to Robbins. Robbins will put up a three-point shot. It'll hit the front of the rim, roll around, and go out of bounds. It'll be out of bounds off of the Bobcats. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll be right back. Warriors are going to inbound this ball. We're trying to take this time to get the numbers written down and with the names. A long out, out, long pass down the floor would be the number 23, David Roger. He puts it up and in on the left hand side. Robin's pass will be intercepted. And it'll, this time it'll be number 13 putting it in up and in on a layup. Lays it over the front of the rim. Heel by Cotter, number 35, Josh Miller. Josh Miller will be called for traveling on the other end of the floor. Bobcat basketball. Checking into the basketball game for the Bobcats will be number one. He gets the long rebound off of the Robins miss. Glenn's going to drive the lane, and he's going to put it up. No good. It'll be rebounded by number 11, Ryan Benedict of the Cotter Warriors. Warriors get the ball back down the floor in a hurry. Shot is up. No good. Rebounded by number 23, David Rogers. His shot is no good. And It'll be rebounded by Hamilton of the Bobcats. Shot by Glenn is up. It's no good, but he's fouled on the shot. He'll shoot two. Foul will be on number I think it was on number 25. And that'll be Braden Adams. First shot is up and in. Score is all tied at eight. Second shot is up and rims out. Shot put right back up and in by Hamilton. No good. I'll quickly back to the other end of the floor. Woods with the basketball. And he'll get it over to Roger. Roger will get it back to Woods. Now the ball will be thrown away, and Slippin will come up with it. Hamilton with the ball, puts it up and in. 10-8 to eight is your score. Cotter wants to run tonight, and they're going to run it back down the floor. He's going to pull it back out because he didn't have numbers. Gets the ball inside the lane. A little bit of acting there on the inside for Cotter, or for Flippin. Robbins will defend that. He'll come up with the rebound. Back down the floor, Robbins 
Gets a pass in the corner to number one. Three-point shot, no good. Glenn with the rebound. He gets it to Hamilton. Hamilton puts it up and in. They're going to call a foul, count the bucket, and he's going to have an end one. Foul's going to be on number 23. That's on David Roger. This is the free throw. Ball comes out to Woods. Woods will come back up the floor with it. He'll get the ball down in the corner and throw it away. Ball comes back up with Slippin. Hamilton with the basketball, drives the baseline, try, kicks it back out to Glenn. Glenn will put up a three-point shot. It's no good. A fight for the rebound. Woods will come up with it. Now Woods will bring it back up the floor. Ball will be knocked away. Stolen by number one. He'll put up a layup. It's no good, but he's fouled, and he's going to free throw line. Number one is Lindsey. He'll be at the free throw line to shoot two free throws. First free throw hit the front and rim, rolls to the back, and is no good. Robbins will check back in. He'll check in for Hamilton. Second free throw is good by Lindsey. Pushes the lead out to 13 to 8. Cross court, long pass. Down into number two. It's no good. This is what the coach was talking about when he told me they were young. Lindsey with the basketball. Gets it out to Glenn. Glenn's going to put up a three-point shot, and it's good. He hits a three-point shot with less than a minute in the first period. 16-8 is your score, flipping leads. The Warriors are being double-teamed by the Bobcats. Now they're going to throw the ball away all the way to the other end of the floor. We're going to have a timeout on the floor. We're just going to have a whistle for the change of possession on the floor. Bobcats will set up their offense. Robbins, Glenn, over to Lindsey. Down inside to Robbins. Robbins is going to fight, get to the basketball goal. Foul is going to be called. Foul will be called on number two. Well, there's no number. Yeah, that foul is on number two. Twenty-four seconds remaining in this first period. Robin seems content to run some clock. Shot clock is off, so he doesn't have to get in a hurry for anything. Lindsey with the basketball. Now they're gonna. Now they're gonna speed up a little bit. Lindsey with the ball gets it down into Robbins. Robbins in the low post to put up a shot. He's not going to make the shot, but he's going to be fouled by number 23, David Roger. Robbins will get ready for his first free throw. It's up off the back of the rim. No good. Robbins puts up the second one. It's off the back of the rim. Glenn tries to fight for the rebound. It'll be Ryan Benedict will come up with it. And we reach the first time out of the first end of the first period. 16 to 8 is your score. Ooh. 
Lippin leads this ball game to fight for to play Yaleville in the uh, Constellation Championship on Saturday. We'll take this time and tell you that this is brought to you by North Arkansas by uh, Baxter Health. Baxter Health is the premier medical center here in our area. If you have something that goes wrong or if you just need to take care of something, get out to Baxter Health. They're on Hospital Drive over in Mountain Home. They'll take care of anything you need, and they'll get you physical therapy after you get after they get you fixed up. They're over there on Hospital Drive in Mountain Home. Give them a call. Copeland comes out for the Bobcats. Driving to the lane is number 15. Wire, Wire drives all the way to the lane, gets a layup, and doesn't get it to fall. Foul's called against Flippin. Bringing the ball back down the floor is number two. Carter's going to put that shot up and in by Woods. Flippin loses the ball, and it'll be stolen by number 13. He loses control, gets it over to number two, out to number 35, which is Miller. Benedict with the basketball. Dribbles along the road left side, throws the ball back in the inbound right to Robbins and Robbins will get the ball to number 15 who gets it all the way back down the floor. Hamilton will knock the ball out. It'll be recovered by number two. Three-point shot by Josh Miller brings the score to Brings the score to 13, 16 to 13, flipping leads. Shot by number 13. Downs is no good. Rebounded by flipping. Inside to number 12. Copeland, and he gets it, he gets it inside. He does commit a foul, though. Ryder gets set to bring this ball back up the floor. They get it down inside the lane, kick it back out. Adams with the basketball, now flipping with the steal. Coast to coast, Downs makes that basket. Ryder looks to try to get this down the floor. They get it across the timeline to Adams. Adams with the basketball, looks to get it back inside. He gets it to Woods. Now over to Miller. Adams inside the number 11. He puts up a turnaround jumper. It's no good. Potter comes back with the rebound with number 33. Glenn will bring the ball back down the floor for flipping, and he'll hand it out to Wyatt. Wire will get it to Downs, over to Glenn. Over to Robbins, and Robbins cuts to the basketball goal, lays it up in the left-hand side. Flipping gets, or Cotter gets it all the way back down the floor, gets a layup, it's no good. Hamilton with the rebound, out to Wire, Wire back down the floor. He's going to get up a shot about four feet away. Glenn gets a shot up. It's no good. It'll go out of bounds off the of flipping. Oh, 
Josh Miller with the basketball. He'll lose it. It'll be knocked out of bounds on number one, Lindsey. Miller gets set to throw this in. Flipping him will apply full court pressure. Adams with the ball. Adams gets it across the timeline with a skip pass. Over in the corner, number 11. The shot will be no good. Rebound Robbins. Robbins will come out of there with the basketball. Gets it down the floor to Lindsey. Lindsey will get down and put, a, put up a layup that's no good. It'll go off the side of the backboard. Then we'll have Miller. He gets the ball to Adams in the corner. Shot by Miller from the three-point range is no good. Hamilton will come down with the rebound. He's going to be called for walking as he went down and drug both of his feet. Potter will inbound this ball. Woods with the basketball over to Adams. Back to Woods. Woods looks at a three-point shot. Now Miller with the ball. Back over to Adams at the center of the court. Ball's almost lost by number 13, Woods. Now it'll be to Benedict. Benedict can get it down to... Number 33, Cole Tilton. Leppin tries to set up their half court. Robbins with the ball. Looks like he's going to take a three-point shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Tilton. Back down the floor. Benedict will try to set up the offense for the Crowder Warriors. This shot will be blocked by Hamilton. Pass to Lindsay will be thrown out of bounds. Robinson claims it was tipped. But it'll be inbound to Cotter. Adams is going to throw this in to Benedict. Benedict will cut towards the basketball goal. Now the ball will be stolen by Lindsay as he stepped in front of the pass. They're going to call traveling on number 10. Dawson, and Dawson took one too many steps on his way to the goal that time. Woods with the basketball. Now Benedict back to Woods. Woods looks to throw it deep. He gets it down to Adams, back to Benedict. Benedict will hand it off in the corner to Tilton. Now the ball will be stolen by Lindsey. Lindsey looks to set up the offense. Glenn with the basketball takes a three-point shot and drains it. Scores 20 to 15, 23 to 15. Two minutes and 29 seconds remaining in this first period. Ball is stolen this time by number 13. Downs. They're going to say he stepped on the baseline, but it's caught her ball underneath their own goal. Adams gets set to throw this in. Gotta hurry up. Didn't